This conference will now be recorded. Guys, do that. What do you think I'm going to send you a slouch? I thought you were going to get a percentage. I got another uh, phone phone on that woman in that, that car in the road. It's parked on the wrong side of the road. It's out of the road. I went by there yesterday. It was yesterday. Well, she, I'll, I'll check on it. All right. And, and please give them some type of note saying, please do not park in the road, you know, for something. Don't put any of my neighbors up. Mm. Thank you. Maybe we need to send a gift to us then if they've got. Oh. But not specific lots. They're just in the, the, their agreements that whatever lots they've got, they'll sell to this buyer. Okay, perfect. So I've got, there's still some there uh, hanging out there. <clears throat> Why is everything so secret with him? Why is everything so secret with him? Because he's probably doing a bunch of stuff he shouldn't. Have vacation days. If you're not, you don't care. Anybody hears you. That's not a good That's it. That would be my that would be my assumption. I think she was on the agenda on the 16th newsletter. I gotta go. Um. Okay, sounds good to me. She's 
the system. Two minutes in. Two minutes right before it. Two minute warning to the meeting start. Oh, don't ruin them. When's he starting? Oh, did we get anything yet? Yeah, what? Yeah. Really? It does a good job. It's all tight. <laughs> Call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning to all. The next regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors will take place on Friday, May the 20th, 2022 at 9 a.m. at the Community Center, 3500 Edgewater Drive, Sebring, Florida, 33872. Please silence or turn off your cell phones. Take a minor. I don't know. Is that better? Can you hear him? Yeah, you you got to speak right in. Is that better? There you go. Okay, please turn off your cell phones. We'll start with the consent agenda. Uh, A, minutes of the Board of Supervisors regularly meeting held April 22nd, 2022. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Do I have a second? Second. Second. Do we have any board comments on those minutes? Do we have any public comments on those minutes? Do I have a vote? Supervisor Phillips? Yes. Supervisor Herrick? Yes. Supervisor Gilpin? Yes. Supervisor Hurley? Yes. President Brooks? Yes. Moving on, the Treasurer's Report of March 2022. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Board comments? Uh, just one. And I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it's proper. I just, we had a half a million dollars for uh, roads and drainage. What was those? What was the significant item, item that made it go up so high? Um, the expenditures we did do that. Um, there was two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for maintenance items in there, and we've expended all that money. So we, we've spent up that side of the budget. There's another $75,000 left, you know, for repairs, but that big chunk, it's all done. Okay. And that, and that was the uh, phase that, one, one and, and then the 100,000 of emergency repairs. Right, okay, thank you. Any other board comments? <clears throat> I've already gotten my answers, so. <clears throat> Good boy. Huh? Good boy. <laughs> well, just so you all know, there was an extra payroll payment in most of the accounts yeah. that will be adjusted next month. So that threw off the payrolls quite a bit. But anyway, that's all. I, the rest is fine. Any public comments? Can we have a vote, please? Supervisor Herrick? Yes. Supervisor Gilpin? Yes. Supervisor Hurley? Yes. Supervisor Phillips? Yes. President Brooks? Yes. Golf Financial Report, uh, March of 2022. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. 
Okay, this report, what we're going to do, since I think we kind of caught them off guard, this was added on at the last minute, and the golf people were not aware of it. So we will, if there are any questions, they will, if they don't have the quick answers, they'll take notes and get back to us on it. Is that fair? Is that fair? Yep, just talk into it, please. Comparative, correct. It's pulling from the So we have an incorrect report. <coughs> oh, so Perfect. we have the correct report. <laughs> I have an incorrect. <laughs> All right. Well, assuming that we have the correct report, and does anybody have any concerns or questions of I Mike? Just, oh, I just got it, so I haven't had that. We just got it. Review. You just got it. Yeah. We just. How come I've had it? I we, you got it we sent we sent it out email and it, we did have an amended packet because it came in and Ms. Chair, I apologize when you came in I had it sitting there with your name on it with that other stuff and I didn't hand it to you and Mike same thing well, when you came you, in it was sitting where you were yeah, sitting. Yeah, I, I got it. I just haven't read it. You just got it. Okay, since we're not prepared to discuss this, we will put it on. There you go. I guess I need a motion to put this on. On the table to the next meeting. I move the table. Second it. Do we have to vote on that too? Do we vote on that? To table it to the next public. meeting? Maybe public. Huh? Comment, public oh, comment. public comments on moving it? Okay, may I have a vote? Supervisor Gilpin? Yes. Supervisor Hurley? Supervisor Phillips? Yes. Supervisor Herrick? Yes. President Brooks? Yes. Okay, we will move that to the next meeting. Uh, now, uh, public comments. So we're at that part of the meeting where if anybody wants to ask anything, any questions pertaining to something that we're not going to address <clears throat> during this meeting, this would be your opportunity. Do we have any public comments? Okay, Scott Corrick, you are up. To report, I can give you an update. Um, your ARPA funding requests that we talked about last meeting are moving forward for presentation to the board. Um, not meeting, uh, but if not, I've been told it will definitely be. latest good yeah. I don't have anything else to report not a lot going on is there any update on Schumacher I, I I'm meeting with staff next week they have run some cost projections that they're going to be in with I asked for two uh, paving or paving Schumacher down to Cortez where you folks would extend it out yeah. and then the cost of paving it all this time was Length of Schumacher. Okay. Yes. Any better? Any better? No. Mm -hmm. Can you hear it okay? Yes. So I will be meeting with staff next week and they're going to give me those two cost scenarios. Once I have those, we can talk a little bit more about that to see where, you know, we have to, we're in budget time, like y'all are getting ready to get into budget time. So we will be looking at finding some money within the budget to address that concern uh, but I will be meeting with them to go over those two cost scenarios okay uh, certainly paving down to Cortez and not the entire length will save some money and uh, may alleviate some concerns of the property owners to the south so I know that they had some concerns with paving it all the way to the end so I'll be working on that other than that um, 
you know, recycling facilities. Uh, they did work out an agreement with Avon Park. There is a location in Avon Park in town up in Avon Park uh, that we finally worked out the interlocal, the legal part of the agreement. All the money has been approved, so the construction of the facilities are going to be starting shortly. Lake Placid will be the first one to come online, then probably Sebring next, and then Avon Park. That's where we're at on that. I did speak with the county administrator, and he was going to reach out to Chris and uh, be working with him on uh, picking up any recycling cans that we've talked about. Yeah, I would like not to drag too long on that since we've notified the district, the personnel, uh, people living in the district about, about a month ago that we were looking to do this. So the quicker, the better as far as making them happy that something. Yeah, I've talked to staff. They're very flexible. If you have, like I said, we <clears throat> talked about them turning them in somewhere, maybe bringing them to the maintenance facility and you tell us whenever there's a group ready to pick up, we don't want them hanging around being in your way. And staff said that they would get a truck and a trailer out here to get them picked up. And then any citizens that were not able to physically bring their garbage can to the facility, if uh, physical limitations or what have you, or their vehicle, get a list of those folks. And then we would coordinate an effort, probably would maybe be on a Saturday or something like that with Waste Connections and go around and pick up those cans for those folks. So, when do we that. think we can finalize this, Chris? I, I think start putting it together. I, um, you know, as far as if we're getting involved in it, we can put it together rather quickly and make a space at the maintenance facility. Because it's going to take, once, once we set it in motion, it's probably going to take a couple of weeks for everybody to get their cans yeah, I'm sure they're not I, waiting I, at home to get rid of their extra cans. Right, so. yeah. You know, set it in motion. Whenever you're ready to set it in motion, we will be ready to pick them up. And, I'd like forward. to start this June if we yeah, get we it may, done in June. Start and get it done in June. Yeah, and we, uh, we may get involved more than you think because I, I would imagine that the majority of the residents don't have a vehicle or the physical capability of picking those cans up. Talk into the mic, Mike. I think. Yeah, anything like so let's work together to try to get this accomplished and get it done for your community. You know, waste connections and like the county, and I'm sure like you folks are, we're facing that we have over 50 openings in the county right now waste connections is having a hard time keeping fully staffed but i think between all three of us i've been assured that we can get it done okay and so, we need to we need to make a note that we've missed a lot of our northern subs have, sure. people have already gone back yeah and, and if, they will when, miss they, this when they return this fall or what have you it's not a problem at all to re-implement yeah. a pickup order for them okay they said they would be glad to work with you folks however we can to get it done Anything else? The uh, the Lake Glenada site for recycling, is that still in the go? No, now that we've negotiated a site within the city of Avon Park and that has been finalized, that will not happen out on the highway. Okay. I would say probably the closest for you folks would be uh, by the YMC, the Max Long Field Complex. It's going to be over there by the ball fields and uh, it'll all be set up with signage and what have you and then once we get those going we'll uh, certainly share the hours and everything with you folks so you can share in your newsletter okay thank you so i'm thinking like howard street or something it's in town i can't remember the exact location but it is in town off of main street up there yeah. Yeah. So, and we'll share all those certainly on our social media platforms and get that information out and certainly make sure that you folks have the addresses of all three places. <laughs> so let's shoot to get this done in June, please. Get it out of our hands. Go on to something else. Very good. Any other questions for Scott? Any public comment? Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. And happy Mother's Day to all your moms out there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, action agenda. Request for legal fees for foreclosures. I have a motion. So moved. Second. I guess that would be Chris and David. I've got to. We, you know, we talked to, um, we had meetings here um, with Richard Johnson representing 
Auckland Pastures, and we have a retainer agreement for $106,000 um, that they would like to start moving on those foreclosures in mass. And we have $50,000 in the budget, so we're going to have to front the other money um, that we hope, but we think it's all going to come back in the end. I did ask Richard, and I'm just going to read this quickly. Um, he said, Chris, I think the total cost with no defenses will be about $1,800 per lot. However, I expect 60 to 80% of the cases to result in a deed in lieu of settlement. If our settles, we expect them to reimburse the legal cost. Otherwise, I don't expect, based on our past experience, that these cases will go past the full time period in, in full exposure. And with $750 fee up front, a lot of that expense should be mitigated. And when they do that settlement uh, agreement, the, the legal fees for those things are one of the first items to come out of that foreclosure. So uh, I think we have minimal liability in, in excess of our budgeted funds for this and hopefully get all these uh, foreclosures moving. And in our agreement with Auckland Pastures, that this was supposed to be done uh, April 2022, so we're pretty close. Any questions from the board? I got a question. So the 102,000 that you you're asking for is just the legal fees, right? Is that correct? Right. Fi that the, well, legal and filing fees. Yes. Filing, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's still going to cost about $1,800 a case, correct? In addition to? Well, that's the that's the predicted. That if it goes for the full, if it's an uncontested foreclosure that goes the full gamut, yeah. that would be the the cost. But what they're saying is they don't expect, and I don't expect to either. Most people are going to get served with the lawsuit and then are going to try to settle by turning the property over. That's most likely what's going to happen. That will limit the amount of legal fees. So you see no more, I mean, they probably won't close us more than 102,000, 103,000. Is that what you're saying? That's a reasonable, yes, that's a reasonable assessment. And we have $50,000 to cover it? We have 50,000 in the budget specifically for this purpose. So we're going to have to front so the So why remaining. wouldn't we do a better? But, a budget adjustment for the other 50,000 so we could do it correctly. Once, once we get it approved today, we will. Mm -hmm. But which comes if, first? <laughs> once it's all said and done, we get that $102,000. The costs back. are the first, yeah, the, that's the first recovery. That's the first thing that has to get paid back through the through, through that process. So Correct. this is for all intents. It's a first. cash flow issue, is what yeah, it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. we pay it now, but we get it. Will we be able to cover it by the end of the sea, uh, the end of the year, fiscal year? I think that's reasonable. Yes, absolutely. Because that that's you, why that's why they chose this firm to go with, is if they can do it all at once. So in that case, we wouldn't need to do a budget adjustment. You'd think you'd have the money to offset it. Correct. Because they'd say with is, is assuming well, that's what I, that's, it's a the a assumption wash. is that it's these the these lots rest. are going to come in and they're going to get flipped pretty relatively quickly. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. I'm better now. Any other questions from the board? Any public comments? Let's vote. Supervisor Hurley? Yes. Supervisor Phillips? Yes. Supervisor Herrick? Yes. Supervisor Gilpin? Yes. President Brooks? Yes. Just one minor question. These are all pretty much from Unit 12? No. No, these are from, I think these are from all over. All over. Yeah. Okay. okay, next on the agenda, proposed utility project. Sure. Have a motion? So move. Okay. That would be, is that Joey or Joey. Chris or who's doing it? Joey, you want to handle it? What project oh, yeah. are we proposing? I'm sorry. Yeah, th no, this is just a purchase of the surge pump and a screw press. Basically items that we need for maintenance purposes for the utilities. So, and it's budgeted. On your staff record, it's $12,991 plus the $13,066, right? Yes, sir. Both both pieces of equipment, the uh, screw press piece of equipment and also the surge pump. And these are both backup? Yeah, well, wastewater treatment plant, and one of them's failing, I think. One one is failed, which is the uh, screw, uh, screw press. Uh, it's the same machine we had a problem with a couple months ago. It cost that sludge hauling price point to go way up. Um, but this pump has been down and out. We've been waiting on quotes. Finally received one from Mater. So 
So this is not backup. This is actual use. This is an actual used one. Yes, the the surge tank pump is backup. But as backup, it's going right into service, and the other one will come out for repairs. Well, if the backup's going right into service, should we and we needed a backup, should we not get a backup? We. Well, uh, the surge tank pump will have a backup because the one that's in service now will go out to be rebuilt. The one that's in the screw press will go out for evaluation with the hopes of repair. If not, we'll have to come back and get one for backup. So we always want to re try to rebuild them before we uh, purchase a new one. So the idea is to always have a backup on these yes, two sir. items. And this will, this will give us a backup at this point unless they're not rebuildable. But that's In which case to... you'll come back to us and request. request. Another for a spare so any what, questions from the board availability uh not sure on the screw press but the uh search tank is 16 to 18 weeks out yeah. so it's not unusual <laughs> it's like a mower sure. and more probably okay yep. sounds like a better move on it <laughs> yeah <clears throat> any other board comments any public comments okay Supervisor Phillips? Yes. Supervisor Herrick? Yes. Supervisor Gilpin? Yes. Supervisor Hurley? President Brooks? Yes. Okay, petitions and communications. There was one. Yeah, we did get a, uh, a nice letter from Carlos Navarro, and uh, I'm just going to read because it's a few lines, but it's given some props to Bob Hiltz for his customer service. And he said, good afternoon. I hope all are well. I'd like to recognize security supervisor Bob Hiltz for supporting me on a security question I had about my home on April 24th. He was professional and able to assist me promptly. Please take the time to recognize this individual. I just moved into the neighborhood and it was an excellent experience that I had with this gentleman. And I have to say the only thing I've ever gotten about uh, Bob is very positive, and I've never had a complaint about security staff. So good job. Good job, Bob. Good job. It's always nice to see a positive yep. communication. <laughs> yep, a lot of the other. Okay, let's move on then to staff reports. Golf. Not budget, just regular. Good morning, Supervisors. Mike Lemire, Golf General Manager. Just a few things today. Uh, I've been uh, making note that Brooker Fence was going to come install that fence uh, behind the clubhouse um, by the loading dock and out by the keg room. That was originally scheduled for May 11th. Uh, they had an opening. They actually have already completed that. It got completed over the last couple days. Uh, so I had a schedule. Uh, I know you're aware that the, the restrooms on number five um, deer have been complete, but the Porta Johns were picked up. Um, Mother's Day buffet is this Sunday. We currently have over 400 reservations. Um, just wanted to notify the board that we have hired two new key employees. We hired a new administrative assistant that actually uh, is like a membership administrator. Her name is Dee Petty. Super excited to have her. She's because she's going to be really strong. Also, we hired a new food and beverage manager, Sandra Durbin. She started on Monday. Um, it's definitely going to be a key position going into next year. Uh, so far, it's, I've had a great experience with her. I think she's going to be very strong. We'll look forward to to what she has to offer our team. Question, sir. Is it based on your sheet? It would suggest that she has responsibility for both sides of the house. That is correct. Now, starting off, you know, obviously there's definitely a lot of nuances that are a little bit different in a golf club restaurant operation than there is in a regular golf club operation. So I have her focused more on the front of the house at the moment. Um, not that she's neglecting the back of the house. She's, she's, you know, working on that as well, but I want her to, to get a, you know, the first project, I wanted to make sure that the front of the house is operating correctly, uh, make sure we're efficient with labor, make sure service is great. Um, and then we're going to start moving on to some stuff in, in, a, in, in a short time, in a short, I'm talking maybe over the next month, we'll, I got some other things that I want her to accomplish on the other side as well. But yes, you are correct. 
uh, the job description that you sent me suggests that she only had responsibility for the front of the house. Just maybe have to update your job description. Right. So it does it does state that it that that it, she is responsible for the entire food and beverage operation on that. Originally, you know, advertising for that position, I didn't know what kind of candidates we were going to get for that situation. So it was kind of a based on experience situation, and that job description was generated by by Troon. Um, and as we go forward, if I need to update that, I can do so. So it is a little more clear on there. So I'll definitely do that. <clears throat> Next, I just just wanted to remind the board that you know I've had a couple questions. So obviously, you know, now that the pandemic is kind of you know, faded off that uh, we are back into our protocol of enforcing two players per cart uh, and also um, cart, cart privileges, private cart privileges are back to um, member only. So in order to use a private cart, you must be a member now, which is just back to our normal policies. Um, obviously, we still got to chase a few people around day to day to, to get them to comply, but I think everybody's kind of getting back in in that mode. Um, Not to cause more, but what is the issue of people using private carts? Is there a big issue that we? Can you speak in the mic, please? So as far as non-members using private carts? Yeah. But right. What, what's the issue there? I, I, I mean, it is a, it is a, it, sure, it is a member privilege, but if we just let it run wild where everybody was just allowed to do that, that, you, you know, we, we usually we require proof of insurance right. and those sort, sort of situations. It's just all that's been the policy of the board. If if the board wanted to I, ch change the policy to allow that, I what? mean, I, I, we could. I, I don't understand who's doing what. Who's who's using a private cart that isn't had play, that has paid so hasn't yeah. paid cart fees, trail fees. That is correct. So when you pay the green fee, you pay a trail fee. And you would use, if you are a non-member, you would use one of the blue club carts. If you are a member, you have the privilege of using a private cart. Right. That is the club, that is our policy. Okay. Who is using private carts that aren't <laughs> members? How many, I mean, is, is, is that a big issue? It's, it, no, it is not a big issue, but I just was letting the board know that we are out, we are back into our normal scenario where we are now in that direction. I I, but I just don't. If I have if I have anybody that violates that and we tell them that they cannot use their private cart, I will let you know who that person is if you'd like. I don't have a name I, for I, you I right now. I just don't understand why we have a rule about something that to me just doesn't seem. I think yeah, you answered it, never mind, that's fine, move on. All right, if I can clarify, so during, during, so during the pandemic, during, during the pandemic, when, when there was a lot of single cart riders, the club was, was having issues with having enough carts to operate daily. So when everybody was using single carts, everybody started using our carts. A lot of members were using club carts, so we had a shortage of carts. So to alleviate that during that time, we allowed residents who showed proof of insurance to use our carts. What I'm stating now is that pandemic situation's over, so we're back to a policy. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, it still doesn't make any sense. I don't understand where the problem lies, I guess. Because as long as they've paid trail fees, then I, what do we care if they use a private cart? And provided it's been, everything's proper. Sure, just because that is our current policy. Yes. Oh, yeah, who's checking it? It just, it seems to me. That is, that is the current policy set by the board. If, you so know, what, what you're saying you guys, is we could change that's, that, right? That's the policy. If you guys are not happy with the policy, we can, I we can review it. I don't understand the issue at all. Huh? I don't understand the issue at all, but let's go on. 
Let's just go on. Okay. Like I said, if you want to revisit it, we can revisit yeah, it. Exactly. That's fine. Good morning, supervisors. Jimmy Murphy, <coughs> golf course superintendent. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so we're, I'm pretty happy with where our greens are going right now. Uh, we're still going to continue to hand top dress our greens, um, trying to stay away from doing the heavy top dressing just because we have verifications coming up as well. Uh, so we're going to continue to work on them uh, by hand. But we are starting to see we're at two to three inches on our root system now, which we haven't had since I got here last year. And we did the air to gas this week was uh, a big benefit to the greens as well. Um, <coughs> we were out on them this morning and uh, cut into them. And there's a lot of good viable root on them now, which is going to definitely uh, help us in the future. And we're, I think the three airifications we do is going to definitely uh, continue to help us. We plan on doing uh, airification May 23rd on turtles, and uh, then we'll follow up with a uh, wall to wall uh, application of fertilizer once we complete that. We'd like to get the wall to wall airification on deer done prior to uh, uh, the start of the irrigation, just because we're going to have three or four holes that'll be down at a time without water on them as well. So, other than that, uh, we're just we're going to continue spot treating and uh, pushing it. Uh, Mike and I have been uh, going through it, uh, the budget as much as we can, especially looking at uh, next year's. I know that we're going to have a topic here in, uh, in a little bit about that. I talked to Ray briefly Tuesday. So the wall-to-wall -wall uh, wall, uh, fertilization, we budgeted $42,000, $45,000 for last year at this time. That was a good price. Uh, it's actually up 89% currently. <clears throat> so we're still going to do the wall-to-wall -wall application. I mean, one, we got to do the best we can with the one that we have. Uh, but it is going to be above the 49,000. We have 42, I think, in the budget. So just basically we want to bring that at, at, to the board's attention because it's going to be outside of the variance that we're allowed by contract to have without board approval. So I believe that number is 10%. So this is going to be more than 10% over budget. It's going to stay in operating. We're not asking for any more money. It's just, it will affect the bottom line a little bit, but that is already what I send you every week. It's already involved in that number. But I just want to let you know that we will be out of variance for that line item in this fiscal year because of the increase. That's all. <clears throat> okay, so as I understand it, you're asking just for us to verbally approve. Do we have to vote on this, or is this a verbal approval for them to exceed their wait, account wait, wait, by wait, 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 X wait. amount of dollars? I don't want you to skip on the fertilization because of money. Correct. Because we I, we don't want to be what we were six. Right. Okay. So if you need something, come to us and ask for it. That, that's all, that's all I'm trying to do, right, need. is make you aware that it is going to be a higher, it's, it's higher than what we budgeted, and it's, that's fine. it's, it's and, 89. And uh, when you come to us with that, come to us with a cut someplace mm -hmm. that you're going to cut. How do you cut? What do you well, cut? I, you don't need to cut. You can't cut. I, I saw a preliminary schedule on just the, uh, just the general fund or the capital, and it's $1.2 I mean... We're, let's we're take, not, we're not, we're not I mean, but that's, capital at this meeting. I know it's not capital, but it's golf course. I don't care. You keep talking about the difference between capital and golf course. It's golf course. We'll have a capital. It's an operating so and it's a capital. I, I don't mind. I, I'm, I agree with Beverly. Don't, do not, uh, you need to keep the golf courses good, but we don't need to spend $3 million, $2 million on, on the golf course and capital. All right. Okay. Yes, sir. We'll discuss capital when we have our second capital meeting. But again, that's golf. That's not capital. It's, it's golf. golf capital. Yes, <laughs> Period. Yeah. Okay. As you would say, I'm the president. Yeah. Well, that's not right. You. That's right. And what's that mean? Thank you. No, I'm Thank not. You. Wait. Come back here. So what you're asking for is to exceed a budget of $19,000, right? My question to us is, do we have to do anything formal or we just say it's okay? If it doesn't require, it doesn't require a budget amendment. 
It doesn't retire, require a change order. No, sir. Okay. So they've all they've they've notified. Do they have to, to have a vote here to agree? No, to no. no I say if there's no change order and no budget amendment, okay. all you you've been notified. Does anybody on the board object mm -hmm. to them spending this nineteen thousand? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. General counsel report. Okay, I had a meeting with uh, Cliff Rhodes on Tuesday uh, regarding you know, the ongoing litigations that we have, the Auckland uh, matter. We got some discovery requests. Uh, I met with uh, Amanda because it involves accounting issues, and uh, she's working on that. Yeah, um, I think we're we're talking about thirty different. This, it involves thirty different properties, and the and the how the Phase Five bond, which is Auckland, versus the Bond, what's called the bond 44 which is fifth third is basically that's what they're that's what what's happening there so amanda's working on that, those uh, responses to discovery uh the avanti matter is going to be a little bit bigger deal uh, mr rhodes is wanting to amend pleadings and he is asking to talk to someone at the district that has the most knowledge about the water meter issue and the warranty violation you know what we're saying on the warranty violations unfortunately in my opinion the person that knew the most about that was omar and omar is no longer with us so is there anybody here maybe mike can identify who would know or be the person that would be able to answer the most questions about the water meter situation talking to your mic then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His mic's not working. Okay. Okay. I'll get that. I'll get that arranged. I'll get with. I'll get with you, Mike. Okay. And we'll get that arranged. Okay. Thank you. Um, Joe, you're okay. Mm -hmm. Other than that. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, I'll talk with if, if Mr. Rhodes think it, it can be done by phone conference. We can do it by phone conference if he wants to sit down and like go over you know paperwork. We'll arrange it that way. So, other than that, unless there's questions, that's all I've got. General Manager's report. And briefly, um, I've got a correspondence back from the Pink Palace folks. We had talked about repairing the uh, drainage out in front in the ditch, but we were concerned with liability with it actually causing some damage to their parking lot and on their property. Um, they did hold a meeting and sent me formally in writing that move ahead with it and if it impacts us, so be it. So we'll be out there in the next couple of weeks cleaning that ditch for the rainy season starts. Um, we also were waiting on facilities plans for the SRF for the utility and the stormwater budget. Uh, we have the draft from the stormwater from Polston, and we should have in the next week the draft down from rural water for the utility side. I was going to try to have the public hearing and present that to the board on May 20th, but it looks like it'll now be June 3rd. We also got some quotes from the uh, to replace the AC unit on the roof of the clubhouse. Uh, the community center and uh, one of the contractors who did the install didn't want anything to do with it. We do have one from Aaron Electric and we have a third party that came out and they're going to finish their quote up today. Uh, we, we should be able to get that done under the $50,000 budget. And it was interesting because the second quote, um, same exact equipment, good contractor was almost $7,000 less. You said community center. I'm sorry, I'm at the kitchen. Yeah. That's, um, excuse me. And also so had still, a had still a, within the fifty thousand that we signed off on. Uh, board approved it uh, a month ago. Yeah, yeah I said we're, we're still, still within, within the fifty thousand oh, yeah, that we signed off. Yes, sir. And uh, hope, hopefully we'll be in the mid forties, but getting the work done. But like everything else, hard to get people out now. No. Also, I had a meeting with Jonathan, Jonathan Harrison. He's head of roads and bridges for the county, and he came out with their environmental manager and another staffer, and we were discussing the preserve property and the districts under contractual um, obligation to maintain the stormwater system out there. And it really is it, some spraying on the ponds, uh, which is kind of a specialty aquatic chemical, and we mow the pond banks and the entry to the preserve property out there. So we were just having a sit down 
uh, talk about any related issues. And we don't spray, you know, ponds ourselves like that. We hire it out. And I asked Jonathan, and I go, well, can you guys spray it? And he goes, well, we could. And I said, well, how about the mowing out there? And he goes, well, we can't do that because we're having, as Scott said, hard time keeping people. But I was really just looking at pricing. But he sent me back a quote for them to do this, the aquatic spraying for $300. And I said, we can't buy the chemical for $300, have at it. And it also keeps us from sending somebody out there by themselves um, to do that work because uh, it's isolated. But we will have some uh, repairs to one of the stormwater structures coming up um, that's leaking underneath and uh, has to be dry to do it, but it'll be a few thousand dollars. So county owns the property and we're on the hook to operate and maintain the system out there. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's... And uh, also, um, as Scott said, uh, the grant applications are moving forward, and I'm, I'm meeting with Randy, the county administrator, next week. He was out on vacation this week um, to talk about Schumacher and, and the progress on the grant applications. But uh, it looks like we will get some money out of that effort. Everybody has a copy of that, right? What we've asked for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what we asked the county for that million and a half. You got a breakdown of it? Yes. We all got it. You got it, Mike? Okay. What else do you have? Um, I don't know. I have a more formal report with the staff reports, but that's pretty much what's uh, working right now. And and it, it is tough with solid waste. Um, <coughs> you know, even with their staff, we had to address a couple of issues with our dumpsters overflowing in the back. And uh, I took kind of a two-prong approach, got the county franchise director involved in doing it, and also requested the uh, state reps aid to make a call to them too, because sometimes all it takes is a friendly phone call from a legislator to make something happen. And it, it may end up though costing us some money because dumpsters are overflowing. What are you gonna do? Um, right now there's trash all over the ground. So I just asked them, I said, just start filling up the dump trucks and taking it out to the landfill and I'll let the garbage go over the top. So it costs us a little more money, but uh, can't just keep having the garbage pile up. And the staff in the back also told me that they regularly get residents coming back there and pulling up and throwing their garbage in the dumpsters there. So we'll put up a little sign and just ask them not to do it. And I, I'm more concerned with the liability, having them on the property with all that equipment and everything out there. So you said the drainage report, you think you'll have it ready by June the 3rd? Yeah, pub will take it to the board. What about the plant, the water plant? Where are we on that? The what plant? The plant, <laughs> sewer plant. Oh, that um, was in contact with rural water and we hope to have that report in the next week too. So we'll do them all at the same time. No, we haven't we haven't moved on. It, we, we we talked about it. Looked at. I'm looking at financing options right now and costs, and we were going to bring it back up during capital with the utility. It made the first pass of capital. I think it's in there for about a hundred thousand a month. Is that a hundred thousand a year? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So 125,000 would be the debt service. It made the first pass. Yep. It's very important. First pass. Uh, one of, anybody have any other questions? Can you just give me an update? Well, I haven't seen anything on the general election that's coming up, you know, that where you have to register by June, what is it, June 8th? June 13th to 17th. And we'll we're going to tell anybody about it or we're going to keep it a secret? Well, we're getting ready to publish the notice in the newspaper. Wow. And we, let's not wait too long now. They no. only got till June 13th. Right. We'll publish that and uh, in the newsletter and we'll also post flyers. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you guys are interested, that's what your date you're going to be there. If you're interested. Oh, 13th, <laughs> 13th and a 17th. I just think the quicker we can notify people, this is kind of an important issue. Okay. So we'll get let's that not no drop we'll, it too much longer. No, we'll get that notice out Monday. Uh, Chris, I, I wanted to make sure. Did you contact Deborah at uh, Manor, the associate HOA, the, the doctor, about the speed bumps? Um, we provided that information. To, I mean, you to, kind of, she got something back from you. Oh yeah. After yeah. okay, she called me. Okay, just so I know. She, uh, she actually stopped me and she talked to you and she went over 
what he did in the past. So, you know, okay. Uh, I guess it's only about seven watts, Chris, is that what it was? It was about seven watts over there, and then you have the speed bump there. Oh yeah, they they had, but of course that that study we did and the information we provided to her said it wasn't warranted. Yeah. Also, uh, Ariel was going to give us an update on the safety of the playground, the equipment. Right. Do you know if any if she, if anybody's looked at it? If there's any issues that we have to close it down for a while or do anything special? The, gla the glaring issues when we were addressing a lot of that to inform a lot of those deficiencies in the insurance report we got were taken care of. We There were some uh, metal stanchions that were coming out of the ground where equipment used to be. They were pulled out. Um, we have for the gates. I'm only talking from a safety issue going forward. Is it safe to have kids playing there. Yes, it still is right now. We haven't done had a formal inspection done, but everything that posed a danger, jagged edges, things sticking out of the ground, and also the playground adjacent to the lake with no gates on it, you know, the gates have been ordered. So, so it's safe for kids and we don't have to worry about it. Huh? And, and and those glaring things and what she was saying is is it's rapidly deteriorating because of the sun and just the age, but there's no glaring safety issue. Okay. Did we initiate a, the second meeting in every month for a staff to be here? Is that why she's not here? Yeah. Well, she's not here because she had a long-standing vacation request due to her anniversary, and her and Kelly are both out today. Okay. Thank you. But the staff meeting is supposed to be the second meeting. Yeah. Of the month. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, if, if they're not on vacation. So, well, yeah. vacation okay. should be monitored too. Yep. Okay. I agree. Uh, anything else for Chris from the board? Any public comments? Okay, moving on. Uh, Uh, let me see where. <laughs> yeah, come on, do it now. What does it relate to? A safety. Because it was mentioned about machines? insurance stuff like that. Is so. about the machines again? Huh? Speeding machines. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <clears throat> Is this about the speeding machines? About the uh, Okay, let me just explain. My name is Bill Norcross, a resident. Earlier this week, we had a lightning storm, and uh, it struck on uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, in fact, I was almost across from my house, and I live on Pebble Beach. Now, we had an EMT that went down Myrtle Beach, flying, and turned around, and obviously what they went back to Myrtle Beach, which was the wrong street. So I just want you to be aware of uh, a three to five minute delay if somebody got really hurt by a lightning storm that makes sure that the GPS is working and don't make a mistake like that again. We, we, we didn't what? do it. It wasn't us, was it? Well, who is responsible for the EMT? EMT. <laughs> Public safety? Fire department. Would they be reminded to make sure that they, they don't make that mistake again? Really? Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. I don't think we're going to contact the fire department, to be honest with you. Well, can you guys do that? Just talk to them it's, because you realize what happened. They, Bill, they just got the address wrong. That's the driver. It must have been pretty serious because the EMT was over there for quite a while. I. I was just concerned about a resident, okay? I appreciate your concern, Thank you. but that's out of our hands, I believe. Any other public comments? Okay, unfinished business. Uh, Chris, you're going to give us an update on the inspection report that was done in January. Uh, each of those, and, and I, I'll, I'm sorry I had that planned for the next meeting, but I'll give you an update, everything that's that was uh, on the insurance company's list. Um, has been addressed. 
Um, we have new safety cabinets, flammable cabinets. We have holders for the torches. If you went back to the golf and public works facility, you'd see a lot of the new, new items there. We have new eye washes. We have first aid kits. And uh, the only thing we're still working on is lights for the vehicles and uh, looking at some more work that may need to be done with the bridge going out to the island. There's, um, you know, going to look at having a safety person look at that because there may be some issues with that structurally due to age. So the best of your knowledge, this whole report has been, it's fine. Yes, sir. A couple of very minor items and all, all the... Uh, do you remember how much this cost us? Twenty thousand dollars. Oh, it did cost that much. Oh yeah. I was going to say we should do it every year, but perhaps we shouldn't. And I, well, we took a lot of that was just a backlog. It was safety debt. You know, once you get fire extinguishers and first aid kits and lights on, then you aren't you know doing that again. But there was just a lot of uh, items there, as the insurance company okay. pointed and out. Your, and next meeting in your report, your instead of going through it page by page, would you just tell us that it is complete? Okay. And you're comfortable with the progress or that we've accomplished everything? Okay. And uh, related to that, too, there was an interesting article, negligence lawsuit filed against the city of Sebring and uh, Morgan and Morgan, but it was actually a hazardous inspector was training guys at the fire department. He knocked over a post indicator and crushed his toe. And uh, so in excess of $30,000. So, uh, you know, that liability and exposure, you can see how minute it gets. I mean, someone coming in to train them in their own facility gets hurt. Um, I believe it. Yeah. Any questions on that issue? Yeah, I, I just, I think you should, uh, with Ray, I don't know if we should do that every year, but it, it sounds to me like should have been done a long time ago so i think you ought to schedule it every couple of years to, to make yeah, sure that we're because it really must have fell in disarray uh, yeah. uh in the last years but i think you ought to try to schedule it <coughs> put it down for something every two three years to for us to check yeah and it, it people say well you're spending the money on it but when you see some of the money you know these lawsuits that get filed over things or same thing you have an employee that's out in the field and gets hurt a little bit and there's no first aid kit in the truck, you know, someone's yeah. going to be like, okay. Well, we just need to have that to, you know, it's everything and, else we do is. And we're taking that to a step books. further in our, in our yeah. business practices too, you know, okay. related to maintenance work, you know, do we have the proper equipment there? Do we have the lockout tag out? Do we have the things that you really need or are we just going to be a OSHA poster child after an event? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on that issue? Okay, revised deer run irrigation project cost closures. Jimmy and Mike, I guess. Oh, Jimmy. All right, <clears throat> so I know that we had a discrepancy in the days on 45 days on the <clears throat> front and 30 on the back. So the biggest reason for the 15 days he wanted in October was basically due to the weather. He doesn't, he can't predict whether we're going to get a hurricane, whether he's going to get stopped or not. He knows that I do not want to go into October and I would like to be done by September 30th. <clears throat> so our, our goal, the first few days he gets on property, it's going to be prep and training. So I, I, mean, I, I can leave it as the 15th or we can, I, I just don't want him to go into October because I think it's going to affect our golf. <laughs> but I mean, I, we can't control weather or anything else. And when Carl gets on property, I, I you know, I, I'll feel better about it. I'm trying to get him started on the June 6th, if I can, to at least get the training done and the prep work done. Can I, I, just, don't, I don't believe they all know what we're talking about. Can I just make just a comment? Uh, sure. I, you know, I, I think it's, important you get it done by october but i i would say i would have i would not object if you have that is it that important and maybe andy could uh, would know better than you guys that we need the other nine holes to keep closed or is that i mean if it speeds up i mean i i played a week and a half ago on deer and it shouldn't have been open i mean it really shouldn't have i mean for what for whatever purposes but when you're doing that stuff and if it helps you get it done by october i think you should i would be in favor of myself 
that you would close uh, the whole golf course and get some more work done, if possible, if that would help. I, I think, you know, the big thing with the HDP is the fusion and everything, and it's they're going to only be able to do three holes at a time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just because it, they got to take the pipe out there, they got to set the pipe, they got to level it, and then they got to, uh, it's basically like a, a heater that they fuse it with. So they can only go so fast. Well, I just know how we are, and it's not you particular, but how things work out when they're supposed to be done at this time and they're right. not done till a long. I mean, I would be in favor of just making sure you get it done. And if you have to close the other nine, I think you should do it just to, right. just to, to make sure it's done. Gotcha. But that's uh, I, only my opinion again. Oh, I'm, I don't want an unrealistic date just because you think that will satisfy us. Correct. Don't promise me something that you can't deliver on. Because well, we're watching. Do what? We are watching. I'd hope so. I mean, it's $2.2 million. All right, so let, dollars. Let, let me explain why this whole thing came about, is that I have a correspondence from the irrigation guy. I don't know what it was. Carl. Carl. Yes, sir. That was sent uh, to the district office, and I got, and it was passed on to me with the dates. And I got a little confused because it says estimated completion date is October the 15th. <laughs> Golf opens on October the 16th. I talked to these guys and I said, so what's up? Because you're telling me September 30th, whatever date you said. And they said, well, we're going to try for that date. And we're going to do our best. And I said, well, this guy who's doing the work says October the 15th, 16th. So my point to everybody is, so I think Mike would agree. I think all you guys would. If it's October 16th, that's when it is. I don't care about loss of golf revenue. I care about disappointing people. Right. Uh, like I said, if you want, if you want it to be October 15th and we get done sooner, then let's leave it there. If you get done sooner, I think we'll all stand up. And it isn't up to us to say when it's going to be done. That is your people's job. And you can't sit here and say, well, if you want us to make it October 16th, we'll make it October you have to make that decision, not us. It's, well, well he, it's a I understand it's that. A it's going to be just as wet in July as it's going to be in August and September. Correct. They could, there's opportunities for hurricanes in July, August, September, and October. So, so the weather that. is the weather. Yeah. Correct. The weather doesn't come into factor here. I mean, if it happens, it happens. My, my point is, if the guy says he can't finish it to the middle of October. And, and Ray, on his behalf, when he sent that out, the biggest thing was when we were trying to get the valves. The manufacturer was giving us issues trying to get the valves and get the material here on site. So he's, in, in your own words, it takes 45 days, weather permitting, to do a nine. If you're going to start the second nine on... Where is it? On uh, August 15th. August 15th. Is that what it is? August what? Oh, August 22nd. You go 45 days out, you're into October. By your own words. I, 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 I'm going to push him as much as I can. I mean, I, I just... I've got 500. We have, excuse me. We have 500 or so members. And if we tell them October the 1st, by God, we better hit it. Fine. That is my full intention. If that's the final draft, it's my full intention to send that out to the members that this is the plan. Well, and we, let's and revise so and that they can plan accordingly also. Revise it and do October 15th. If we get done sooner, it'll be better. All right. I want this to come from you. So you revise. Let's see if there's any other questions or issues on what you sent us. And then you resend it to us. Yes, sir. So we can uh, uh, look at it and... Uh, we just, if uh, Mr. Herrick still wants to send it out, we'll send it out. But that's just and post it. Yeah, that's. So, is there any other comments on the calendar that he has given us as far as May, June, so forth and so on? I've got questions. Maybe it's just me. Jimmy, if I Go ahead. if I was doing this, I would set November one as the date, just to give yourself a because. If we go to the members and say, by November 1, everything will be done, then that gives us time for 
hurricanes and all outside forces, the vows that don't come in. And that's going to happen. Well, okay. You, you built enough. Fair enough. You do enough. So if you want to come back to us and with something that will give you something. Okay. Okay. We, we did. The valve issue well. has been resolved. I know, but. I want you to send it back to us with the date you think you're going to hit. Yes, sir. With no extensions whatsoever. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, I have some other questions on this. Are we, I, well, in reading this, I can't see, number one, are we closing down Turtle at all, at any time? I can't see it on here. The, the, yeah, the, the second airification is the only one that's going to get affected. And I think we were shutting down, I'm pretty sure, nine at a time. I guess what I'm saying, if you're closing down Turtle, I can't see it on this report nine holes or 18 holes or any holes if you're closing any part of turtle it's not showing on this report which puts it's, it's it should be included i'll revise it one day and send it and then little things like on 620 you talk about all the holes except for number one i guess you just forgot that hole. if you look at 620 you say you're going to start on number five move to six and seven move to two through four finish on eight and nine there's no mention of one just sloppy i mean i assume one's in there someplace on on the back nine i believe one was included with the driving range huh? was, I, I believe one was with the driving range nope okay it says uh no nope, it's not there it's a uh, driving range is included there. <clears throat> the back nine, it just talks about beginning on 15 and then go 12 through 16. Doesn't really say what we're doing with 10, 11, 17, and 18. I mean, just little stuff that every time I read it, I kind of... I, I just need this to be done more accurately and with realistic dates and to be inclusive of what's actually going to happen. And if turtle, if one, if we're closing one of the nines, it should be noted, so that way we know it's going to be nine on deer and nine, like you were talking about doing your crisscrossing, which you still, I don't know, do you have a plan to do that? When we start crisscrossing nines, which I assume we will at one point in time. It was all originally on the calendar, and then you guys asked to revise it. And so oh, I want Can you speak into the speak in the mic? Thanks. I said originally when we did the calendar, it was all on the calendar. So we just need to go do it again, and just we would take care of that next Talk week. About this? Yes, sir. Yeah, but we already said we couldn't understand this because it really didn't say anything. I mean, it had stuff. Just do it, Mr. Brooks's way. We are. It's the way we asked. But you still say I should send it to the Greens Committee too, correct? The calendar. Leave the calendar for Greens Committee. I think once the calendar is approved, you should give it to the Greens Committee. Yeah. Gotcha. I think they should have that information. I think that was one of our faults in the past is that we didn't give the Golf Committee, if you will, the Greens yeah, Committee. Yeah, trying to figure out who the Greens Committee. Yeah, was. the Golf Committee. I don't yeah. think we give them enough information, and therefore they they don't know what's going on that we decide here. And I think so. Communicating back and forth is essential. It'll all be updated next week, and then. When you guys say the calendar's good, then we'll submit that, it to them as well. sheet should be reflective of what you got on that calendar. Correct. But I was told to simplify oh, everything. Yes. <laughs> well, the other thing with this calendar that you have here, when you go back, when you do it, which I need you to redo it, yes, I want sir. you to go through a whole year. You stopped at December, but you might as well do January, February, March, and April. Go through a whole fiscal year. Go through 12 months. And you want that accurate? The, want we don't know what... Tournaments are going to be available at that time, right? Right. That's why I said we, we, we can't do January. The maintenance of the course. I don't care about the tournaments. What is it going to do for maintenance? Everybody's complaining that we don't how we got into this trouble to begin with. So we asked how we're going to not have it happen again. You can't write a year's worth of maintenance on a golf course and stuff. And have you come and nitpick everything with us? It can't be done. Why not? Because there's too many outside forces. That's why. And it's called Mother Nature. Is that true? You can do yes. it? Yes. We can do it. It'll be subject figure. to change. Because it will be subject to change. It won't be written in stone. Well, fine. If it changes, it changes. Around. You know, I don't understand with people sometimes. 
if something's written and, 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 and it's proved and it needs to be changed, you just come and say, you know, something happened, we got to change it. Just okay. like he did with the $19,000. What's the big issue? Perfect. But if you don't have a plan, how do you even know what to do? That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> I, I'll run it out to as far as I can. So basically, you want everything up until the bu budget restarts. You want a fiscal. So next budget. meeting, all I want is to have a calendar that we can send out to to the membership on what's going to happen with this summer. That's all I'm looking for right gotcha. now. Get me to first base. So you you want it to start from October and go to September, if I understand you correctly. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the irrigation plan on what's going to happen Correct. this summer with the courses. Give that to us first. You got it. And then you want the calendar later on. You can give it to me at the next meeting, the meeting after that. Fair enough. Okay. Any other questions on this issue? Okay. Uh, we'll skip C for a minute since Andy's here. And we'll go to D. Budget conversation to explore golf marshal starters, job description, and coverage. I think Andy's doing that. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Andy Kessling, head golf professional for the club. And good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> so I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Sure. So I'm just going to kind of read through our currently what we do. Um, you know, the golf operations plan is to, to deploy starters and rangers as needed uh, during our non-peak season, which is usually May through mid-October. Uh, once the tee sheets get busier, uh, the plan is to utilize a starter on the tee time course. Uh, we're going to utilize our ranger. Uh, we will also utilize a ranger to insert pace of play is maintained in under four hours and 15 minutes and that all car procedures are followed. Uh, during the months of November through March, uh, the plan is to staff a starter and a ranger each day of the week. Uh, the duties for the ranger, uh, keep track of the pace of play is always super important. Uh, all groups need to finish, as I said before, in under four hours and 15 minutes. Uh, we also want our rangers ensuring the car procedures are being followed properly where where to drive your cart, keeping it on the path around tees and greens. Um, and then all golfers are taking care of the course, filling divots, raking traps, and repairing ball marks. And then finally, uh, we want the rangers to assist with any other needs that are out there. Uh, so if a group needs something, they can radio back to the golf shop and let us know what's going on out there. Uh, starter duties are, you know, welcome the guests. Uh, we want to make sure that the guests are showing their receipts, so they check receipts to make sure they paid. Uh, we also need to track member play and member group play, uh, pass along the day's whole locations to each group, uh, go over pace of play expectations, car procedures, and then also taking care of the course, which is, you know, filling divots, raking traps, repairing ball marks, um, all that good stuff. Uh, we also plan to, um, we're planning to utilize some of our A-frame boards that you see outside the golf shop in the front entrance, you know, with just some of those expectations. Um, Marty Vogel brought to me a, the three R's, you know, which I thought was great, which is repair your ball marks, uh, replace your divots with sand and rake your bunkers. And I thought that was great. And I said, well, you know, sometimes it's hard for my starter to catch every member group. Uh, they're going to certainly talk to all of the public groups, but, um, some of the member groups, they congregate the, the first tee and then they just tee off in order. But if we've got a sign up, at least it reminds everybody, both members and public play of what our expectations are. Pace of play will be on that, raking bunkers, repairing divots, um, you know, and filling your divots out there and raking traps will all be on there. So uh, we can have those those frames up on our starting hole. So um, that is a game plan that we're uh, we're going to get some of those out there as well, just uh, just to keep hammering home the point of, of <clears throat> what's important, which is where you drive your car and then taking care of the golf course, which all golfers should be doing, but we know all golfers don't always do that. So, um, and then also the starter is going to let them, you know, let, in particular our public play know where bathrooms are and then also the beverage car service, whether we've got it, uh, whether it's Lisa, Michelle, whoever's out on the, on the beverage cart. Uh, and then obviously handicap instructions for those that are handicapped. 
when needed. So that, that's kind of the game plan that we are currently doing, and uh, those signs are something that we're going to implement here next season. Shouldn't our expectation be that the course should be played in under or four hours or less? I think that's – I think it's pretty easy for, you know, our typical golfers, the avid ones, our member play, our – you know, our frequent public play to finish in under four hours. However, I, you know, I know if I go, if I'm going out to a golf course and I haven't played it before and I've got a couple of buddies and we're trying to enjoy our round of golf, you know, speeding around the golf course isn't necessarily our goal. Um, so I, I feel that playing in two hours, two hours, 10 minutes per nine, right around there is, is, is sufficient. It would, it would still seem to me that our expectation should be four hours or less. And that it may, and you make that adjustment by having, a, as far as on the shotguns, you make the adjustments by allowing that time between. Sure. For the, if it goes four, four and a half, you'd have, it's not going to hurt you. But I still, in my mind, the expectation should be that you're doing it in four hours or less. Sure. I, I think we need to remember our demographic, and most of us have to go to the bathroom, and that takes ten minute, five or ten minutes per side. So I don't think four hours and fifteen minutes is unreasonable at all, because just simply because of that. And the guys like to stop and get a beer, and I just well, it, don't think that's sure, sure. I, and and I and I I know that those are the expectations that I need to go. To, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I am going to stop for beer. Right. And I can still play the course within four hours. I that just seems to me that that's what the expectation is. It going to happen all the time? No. But so uh, maybe what it, we maybe also it, maybe it takes longer. Down. I I haven't seen it necessarily except for when we get in real in the middle of peak season. We do sure. and, and, and I think overall, I, I think our pace of play is, is pretty good. We obviously have those groups, um, you know, that we have to push along and, and that we have to keep an eye on. In particular, some hotel play. You know, all those people are coming here to have a good time. And, you know, some of them are having a couple more drinks than others. And you know, it just takes a little bit of time. And they don't know the golf course. What I would say, too, is that my starters also track the turn times. So anybody that's pushing, you know, if someone's turning in over two hours or five minutes, that's an alert for our team to get out there and just kind of see what's going on and just say, hey, you know, you guys are doing you're doing okay, but we want to keep you on pace and we don't want to see you getting any further behind because we do, you know, we did two or three days of over 500 rounds and guess what? If there's one group out there that's pacing 430, everybody else behind them is pacing at least that or longer. So. Uh, we do run into some pace of play issues on them really busy days, in particular when it comes to the twilight golf. The later in the day, just the slower it kind of gets. So um, those are, you know, that's obviously uh, those days where it's like, okay, Ranger, we need to be here. We need to be tracking the pace at this time so that everybody can enjoy their round of golf. But I'm four hours is, is my goal. Four hours and 15 minutes is what my pace of play sheet says. So anybody that's in between that four hours, Time frame four hours and fifteen. We need to be, we need to be on. But yes, I I agree. I think a good expectation is four hours. I think it's reasonable to finish in under four hours and fifteen minutes. Uh, I just don't want. I'm looking at the people not knowing that we're saying four hours and fifteen minutes is acceptable. I sure. think they should be playing to a four hour round. And I'm happy to let our starters know. Hey, you know, let's preach. Just we want to see you finish. And we we actually that's my. But yeah. that's only one opinion, that's, and she doesn't agree with my opinion. So like, here no, we go. it's I mean you know, Craig and I, your pace of play is quick, you know I true in in particular, and you know there's going to be days, you know, we're approaching the summertime, so there's going to be six exactly. out of seven days that you finish in four hours, but as soon as that gets to or January, three hours, February, I'm sorry, March. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that you finish in three hours, as soon as it gets to three hours forty five minutes, that's a five hour round at some some folks you know so that's that's summer becomes hard you know because our members tend to push some of these folks because they're just you know we're not busy you know on days when we don't have public play you know members are going to finish in three hours and then they're going to if they do that two or three days in a row and then as soon as it hits three hours 45 minutes or four hours 
Well, we're getting phone calls. Right. I can't go to that group and say, hey, you're playing in three hours, 45 minutes. You need to pick it up. I actually need to go to the member group and say, hey, this is our our expectation is this. I'm not, ar I'm not yeah. arguing. Yeah, no, and it's, you know, be thankful for the three-hour rounds and then just understand that, you know, obviously we're still a public golf course and we're going to have some four-hour rounds. So, And I think most of our members do understand that. But we do, once in a while, I'll get some complaints that, you know, they're getting pushed a lot. And it's usually – it's usually in the non-peak times because we can't play quicker. So I do try to set up, even in season, in particular with our shotguns, you know, if the shotgun isn't full with 144 players, and I've, I've got 100 in there, but I've got a group of 30 from the hotel and one other member group, well, I'm not stacking the member group right on the hotel's butt. I'm working to give it a buffer so that, hey, you guys can still – they can play in four hours and 15 minutes, and our member groups can play in three hours 45. So, you know, it's it's dynamic, but um, I think our guys do a pretty good job with it. But that, that's kind of the game plan going forward and some more signage. <clears throat> and then along with our whole locations and flags, uh, that'll be something else that we that we do. But any questions, any further questions on that, guys? Or I anything related to the golf operation? <laughs> I just got one question. When you say during the months of uh, November through March, you're going to staff a starter and a ranger each day of the week. I think that's good. I, are they going to primarily concentrate on the uh, non-shotgun uh, course, or which I assume is where most of the problems would be? Well, it, it it all depends on what we've got, you know. So if that shotgun is full with 140 players and half of that is public play, you can imagine where where my ranger is going to spend a lot of time. And then if the other golf course is busy, then you're probably going to see myself or, or our new assistant that's starting here in a couple weeks. You know, somebody else is going to be out there. So, you know, we've, we've got budgeted in there to have a ranger every day. If there's a need for, for two once in a while, well, we'll either staff one or that'll be the time when you see me out there or, you know, a golf, a trained golf team member in, in, from the shop or Mike, can you last him? He knows how to roll greens. He can range it once in a while, too. <laughs> I think it would also help if the ranger, when he goes by each group, instead of driving by and just driving by, stop and say hello. I think that would also help with speed of play. Sure. Sure. It, yeah. What? Makes sense. I want you guys to, you guys should know, in particular, our members should know who our rangers are. You know, and I, we're going to focus more, obviously, on the public play just so that we can keep your pace to play better. But, you know, on certain days where it's not quite as busy, I'd like them to spend more time and just say, hey, at least let them know where your name is and if you need anything. And but even with outside guests, it's good for them to say hello. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. Yes, sir. No, no doubt about it. I think, I think this is well done. Okay. Andy, I just have a question on yes, uh, – and it's happened quite a bit, but and it did for us last week when I played. But if, if you got a packed golf course and you got one group that's three holes behind, do you? And I don't care if they're in a four hour and 15 minute thing, do, do we say anything to them? Because the whole golf course behind them is backed up. And that's that's my only thing. I don't mind if if they're a little behind, but when you got a three or four hole gap, like we played behind a, a hotel group last Tuesday. Okay. The first two groups were four holes ahead of the last hotel group. Sure. We went, we skipped a hole and went around them. Okay. But I'm just saying, I, I think when it's three or four holes, I don't care what it is. Some somebody should, and maybe I'm wrong, sure. uh, but maybe somebody should say something because it's not. It has nothing to do with four hours or four hours and 15 minutes. It happens to be, they have to be way slow. And that should be addressed. That's all I'm saying. You know, I think in that certain instance, you know, when a group, you know, you've got a, the first two groups are playing at a three and a half hour pace and that third group's playing at a four hour pace and that gap gets to be two holes. I think it's appropriate for my ranger to come up and say, hey guys, your pace is good. However, you do have a couple holes there. You know, if there's a little bit of room to pick it up, great, but just keep, you know, keep keep on the pace you're at, you know, and if you can pick it up a little bit. It's it's really touchy. I know if I'm on the golf course and someone's coming up to me and I'm playing, 
nine holes in under two hours, that, that's going to, that may cause me to go into the golf shop later and say, hey, why is the Ranger pushing me when I'm playing in a, under a four hour pace? So it's touchy there, Mike. You know, okay, so you answered the question. You just sure. let them go do it. <laughs> well, like I said, I think it's appropriate to say, hey, guys, there's a couple holes there. You're doing okay. You can fill it in great. You know, just, well, we just make it we were all of us except one were paying members are paying sure. we paid our green fees and we just most people wouldn't but we just went around them sure. I mean it was and they were nice about it they apologized I'm sorry we're so slow well if you are then why are you so slow but uh, it just that is when I think people the attention comes up and and it should be somebody should say something when it's three four holes behind the group in front of you that's that's my only question no and i and i understand mike i also <laughs> have and that kind of goes back to the what i was saying earlier about summertime you know we're gonna we're used to playing in three or three <laughs> and then i get a phone call with a group that's playing in the <laughs> it like i said it, it it is hard if they're over four hours i'm happy to talk to them if they're under four hours we want them to come back i don't want to you know i don't want to make them upset and then go play elsewhere uh, but I've also had the case where, you know, if my ranger's not knowing when a group tees off, I may have a group tee off at 8, and then the next group's not teeing off till 8.30, you know, and then we had groups from 7 all the way to 8, full up, and then there's a 30-minute gap there. And if my ranger's not checking his tee sheet, well, now he's going to a group that started out mm -hmm. two holes or three holes behind, and he's saying you're two or three holes behind. Well, these three were all together. They were a, a group from the hotel. So. Sure. So it's in, in it, so it's very important that our rangers know when every group starts, know exactly what their pace of play is. And like I said, Mike, I'm I'm always happy to, you know, come out there. If there's a slow group out there, I'm happy to see when they check and come out there and take a look at it. Um, well, we just went around. I mean, that's the best thing. I mean, it's we we're out there having a good time. Three non-members and and one member. And sure. So it was no big deal. But simple. I also just. I know we had the discussion during, and this is not related with the starters, Rangers, but at a board meeting about allowing residents that had insurance on their car. You've already talked about that. Yeah. Part. Yeah. I missed that. So we're good. If there's any other questions, guys. Any questions for Andy? Mm -hmm. Any questions from the public? Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, revised budget goals. All right, basically, this is me. I sent you all out a revised budget planning process and I had to make some revisions. I made a mistake when I originally had done it. Uh, I based the utility fund on the actual plan, not the actual reality of what's going on. So I, when I looked at the March uh, district financials, it told me that the revenues were off a little bit and the expenses were off quite a bit. So I when it, where it says REV to 29.21 on the revenues and REV to 1960 on the expenses, that's really where it's projected to come in now. Then using the same percentages that we assigned before, I came up with new totals. And the other thing that's different from this sheet is that I took out the capital expenditures for the carts and the equipment because it was already on the capital report, instead of having it on two places at once, I thought it'd just be best to have it one, uh, located on one of them. So that gave us a revised total of around 1678000 excluding the lease agreement and the card agreement of capital monies available on the average each year. So here's, here's what I'm trying to get at. If, if you have about a million seventy a year and you have capital between the leases and the carts of about, say, 400,000. That gives you about a million two every year for who knows what, whatever may come up, monies that we may need. And I think that's a pretty reasonable number to have and not commit to, but to have in the pocket every year. What's gonna happen though, is that we're gonna borrow $5 million, and these are approximate, $5 million to do a drainage program, $10 million to do a new water facility, plant facility. That's $15 million. Now, if you add 3% to that 15 million, if you take it out for 20 years and you add 3% to that, 
It's going to cost the district somewhere around $770,000 a year, 20 years. So the, the challenge for us is, if you, do we just take that 770 and subtract it from the million four or million five, whatever we have, and say we're going to live on $700,000 worth of capital for the next 20 years? Or do we figure out a way to raise that monies to offset the loans that we're about to take out? My recommendation, and this is just food for thought for you guys. We're not going to decide this today. But my recommendation is that we would raise the assessment rates because in reality, that's what we're going to have to do to cover this cost. How else do we come up with $770,000 a year? There's just no way. We're not going to be able to do it. So I talked to Chris about this, and he figures, well, we're going to get that new utility rate information, and we're going to raise the utility rates. And that's fine. And I said, well, how much do you think we can raise them? And we figured out maybe 200, 250,000. This is a guess because we haven't seen the report yet. So let's assume that's correct. That still leaves us with 500,000 or 600,000 that we have to figure out where we're going to get it. And this is not short term. This is for 20 years. Now, the blessing in disguise that we have is once we borrow this money and build these facilities, it's two years later that we have to start paying it off. So we have a pro if I'm correct, am I correct what I'm saying? So we have approximately four years to raise this money and get us to the level of where we could support this kind of debt. The smart thing says don't wait to the fourth year before you start. The smart thing says we have to do it now. So I'll just give you an example. This is just me playing at home the other day. If we took the assessments this year are going to come in around 3430000 if we added 5% every year for the next four years, we'll end up accumulating $739,000 more than, that's, than that $3,430,000. Okay, I, am I, you got that? Am I going to that? If we did 5% for four years, we would, we would then accumulate enough monies to cover what I assume the loans would be. Now, these are not numbers that are set in, in concrete. Maybe when we actually get the numbers of what the plant would cost and what utilities we could do, maybe it's only going to be, instead of 5%, maybe it's 4%. Maybe it's only 3%. I don't know yet. But I, the fact, what I'm trying to get to you guys today is we're going to have to do something starting this year oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and create an account that secures that money from ever being used other than paying off the loans. Is that possible? <clears throat> yes. Certainly. Yes, you, you can budget restricted money, set it up, move it every month or every be? year, and okay. put it aside to only be used for certain purposes. Okay. So again, I'm not sure that my numbers are correct, but I think well, we all park. have to it's come ballpark. to the realization. It's ballpark that we have to do something and, do, and start this year. I think that's good. Is there any likelihood of grant money for either one of those projects? Probably not. There may be, right now what we're looking at is a low interest loan because the SRF is, is 20 years and they're always below market rates. So even with the interest rates going up, I mean, um, there was the uh, last three years, two years, they had a 0% interest rate on it. They're still hovering around one. So it, it goes up, but that money's all that federal money coming down through the state. So they're trying to keep that interest rate low on it. And that was the purpose of it. But we'll continue to look at it. Um, we're going to be putting in a grant application for the turtle run greens. I mean, the turtle loop with the cooperative funding through the water management district, but that's a 50-50 match. And some of those straight up um, grants, our median incomes are too high. Yeah. Okay, that, you, you answered but, it. But, but we will continue to beat the bushes and I am looking at alternative sources. I just, what's the likelihood and you yeah. gave me the right, the answer. Now, now right. when you look at some issues we might have, like replacing asbestos pipe that we don't need to do immediately, but it's in unit two and up front because the housing values are lower there and the incomes 
probably could get some of that money, you know, for specific project areas. Okay. Thank you. When are we going to hear from the? I know this is start. We start with the golf, but we we got to hear from the staff on on the budgets for utility and so on and so forth. Next week. It's all it's all so, on the schedule. You know, it's, it's, so we're kind of getting the cart before the horse, but we do have to do something and look at it. In, uh, oh, I don't think so. This is two different things. Uh, but and it's it's big picture, but the, that rate um, work will be done by the consultant early June. So right then we, you'll have options. How much yeah, money that, you want to raise? And that's rate. what I meant. We need to know exactly. You know, we've been waiting for some of this stuff, and we need to know, and then hear from the staff on what they want next year and what their thoughts are. Yeah. And really, we're you know. we're working we're working from this same sheet, trying to hold the line in in areas that we see that maybe increase. You know, health insurance could be a five percent increase. We may put it in the budget there, but there's some other areas we'll try to trim if we can right. and look for efficiencies. I mean, you have your budget numbers right. as a guideline. This is capital that's not going to go away, assuming that we are told that we need the new treatment plan, and I'm assuming we. Can that we can get the drainage thing done and assuming we can get the loans. And and the uh, the drainage is more set when that facilities come back, it'll have price tags on it for the different items. I mean, I'm just saying it's, it, it's going to be somewhere up to $15 million. And I just think yeah. we have to face the reality of, of what's going on and, and prepare ourselves and tell everybody now what's going to happen so that we don't drop the bomb on them and say, oops, we should have been doing all along. Yeah, and yeah. I think we need to start sooner rather than later, like you. I think if you do it now and you do it for the next four years, you can get yourself and yeah. we'll get ourselves in a position, a position where it won't kill us. Right. And we have, and I still think you have to maintain whatever number we decide, but a certain number for capital that's going to come up. Exactly. Be it a million two, a million four, whatever we decide that number to be. But there's no way I don't think getting around increasing the assessments by 15 to 20 percent over a four-year period of time just no way to round it if we want to pay this off and one thing that is is positive is with our recent increase on the connection fees um you know we're getting more revenues of course you have a downturn those revenues aren't going to continue to go up but we are collecting that money and it was uh, kind of interesting because Southern Homes called in and said, hey, what's going on with this? And we didn't budget for these increased fees. And my response was, we sent you an email 30 days ago letting you know there's a 30-day window and informed all the developers. And I called several of you, and Mr. Hornick took advantage of it, uh, buying some of those fees. The fact you didn't, I go, you'll have to work that out with your boss. I go, but they're going up again next year, too. So okay, that's been helpful, and, and that kind of money is in a reserve for capital expenditures. So you've got the revised budget numbers as I see them today. Uh, we've had the com the, uh, you, you've heard my plea on what we need to do as far as uh, coming up with this money to cover the thing. And when we, once we get the final numbers on how much it's actually going to cost us, we'll have to decide percentages. And if, if indeed, if we could do it over three years, that's great. But I don't think we can do it. And you'll, you'll be forced into that, too, because when you put in that loan application at DEP, it comes with a fin financial sustainability report yeah. um, that you have to show them where your revenues are coming yeah. from to pay that. On the, on the utility side, it's, it's relatively simple because it's easy for us to show the revenues and bump the rates up in the capital. The general fund side may be more of a struggle and push you into that assessment or trimming some programs okay. we have now. Yeah. Any other questions on that issue? All right, let's move on to discussion to and from board. If anybody has anything they want to ask in general. I, I think because of the importance of us talking into these microphones, I would like to go back through with Bassett and find out if we got the headphones or whatever you so that it was always there instead of having to be and it seems to me like I I know these are new mics, but boy, I've okay. had enough problems with them that I don't quite understand why they're cutting in and out all the time. 
you're not working half the time. It's something, these can't be that old, or I don't believe they are. Seems to me like we just replaced them six, seven months ago, maybe. Well, didn't we? I don't know, but I have to agree that these are not working out. Yeah, we get you a headset or a smaller mic or a lapel okay. mic. I'll bring you a couple options. I don't know. How is it? Like. Can you guys hear anything? Are you guys all right hearing when we do it right? But we got to make sure we're talking, you know. Yeah. And I, I would I would agree with Craig. I, if we should check it out and see if we have an alternative, that would be a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it, you can see how it helps because when everyone's speaking into the mic, we had our 15 pages of board meeting minutes and no one had any problem with them. So, and they're, they're only as good as the recording. Right. And that's, I, it's so important that was, it's, that we speak into them that we have a tendency to forget. Yeah, I'll bring a few options. Anybody else got anything? All right, I do. Just, I'm going to form a committee with the board's approval in reviewing the list of equipment that the district currently leases or owns or between all three functions, it's a little over $4 million worth of equipment that's listed here. Very difficult for me to decipher it. I'm not that familiar with it. Uh, I still think it's in the district's best interest if we have one lease agreement representing the district and then everything else we just own outright. So I'd like to suggest that we form a committee that I would recommend would be comprised of uh, Chris, Jimmy, Mike, actually I wrote this down, I should read it. <laughs> Jimmy, Mike, Joey, Chris, Mike and Mike Hurley representing the uh, the board and, and review all this equipment and try and get it into one package where we do one lease agreement and we own everything else. I think we'll find out that we have lots of duplications in here and I don't think it's necessary. And I don't have the expertise uh, certainly to say what's good and what's bad. Do you gentlemen have the expertise? I know we're a little bit under the gun because Jimmy's got to get uh, as quickly as possible the information to the uh, lease company because they're working so far out. I understand that. But I think we've got to try and get a handle on this because I know that the cost of the lease agreement is going to go up substantially. I would just like to keep it as low as possible. So do you guys have a, dis uh, are you guys okay with doing this little committee and having them report back to us what we need? And Good with me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then I, I will let, I just, oh, wait a minute, I'm ahead. sure there's a formality. Yeah, there's, like I say, the only issue when, if there's a, if it's a committee formed by the board, it becomes a yeah. sunshine committee. That was going to be my question. <laughs> well, there's only one board member. Yeah, but still, if it's a, if it's a, if the, if the board is forming a committee, there's a process, and as part of that process, any committee formed by the board is a sunshine committee. So, can the president form a committee? Yeah, I think yes, technically they can. I mean, we probably would have to would want some sort of a vote, or at the very least consensus. But board, but mm -hmm. How do we get around it being a sunshine committee? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, it, we, it's just not an it's not an official board committee. You know, we have you have someone go if it's a if it's an informational, like an, an informational committee where we're going to go collect information, we're not going to make a decision. That committee has no decision making authority. So the committee goes and collects information and brings back and reports to the board. Can they make a rec can they come back with a recommendation Absolutely. to the board? Absolutely. They just can't make a decision. So oh, as long right. as there's no decision well, being ultimately, made. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's going to be our decision because it's financial aspects of it. Okay. So then it's not a board committee. It's just, it's a fact-finding, it's a fact-finding committee. That's exactly what I wanted to Perfect. do. Yes. Okay. So as I was saying, we'll have a fact-finding committee. Are you guys okay? Huh? <laughs> but, but didn't you say Mike Gilpin and Mike earlier? No, be just Mike Curley. Mike Curley. I thought there was only one board member, yeah. and I thought okay. that Mike yeah. was more qualified. Okay since he's dealt with the equipment. I've yeah, so, so that committee will go find, will go perform the fact-finding, and <coughs> Mike, 
along with other, you know, the other people that are, are doing that fact, we'll come back and report to the board and then the board can make the decision. Okay, Mike, you okay with that? All right, so I'll leave it up to you guys to form your informal committee and get back to us as soon as you can, because I know you want to discuss the issue of how much it's going to cost. Okay, thank you. Any other general conversations between the board? I got a couple of questions I just got asked. Uh, Mr. Gilpin brought up last last meeting about this utility box sinking. Has anything happened with that? Did we get yeah, that I, well, I talked to, to Chris again, and I think I don't think it was electric. I think it's water, and I'm going to meet with her again. I think it's a water box, but I, I did check with Chris this week about it, so yeah, it's I'm a, still finding out. So. so we still don't know? Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, I think, a valve box out in the front that is a shutoff valve for the units out there. So I think it's we'll a water. It out, yeah. water. All right, so we're still working on it. Yep. Uh, that's all I had. Anybody had any other general conversation between the board? Okay, discussion to and from board is up. So we're up to, but do I have to adjourn the re-adjourn the budget workshop? Or can I just go right into it? It's up to, it's up to you. Yes, does anybody? Do you want to take a five minute recess or, because it's like generally I don't stay for the budget workshop if you don't need me here. So. You want to take a break? Yeah. Five minute recess. All right, we'll take a couple. We'll take a couple minute break and then we'll resume with the uh, first workshop of golf. Uh -huh. Okay. No, because you said you had verbiage or something. You were gonna. You said you had something to send. Well, I do know some of those yards that saw this kind of big thing and they hedged around the tree.
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I originally thought we would have been talking about this. So it's good to have him back. Yeah. Yeah. There's still going to be exceptions. There's still going to be exceptions. I've got some people that I know, they'll try to go out there. If it's too, gets too hot, they just can't finish the day. And so, therefore, they ride by themselves. Now, six, then the next thing happens is, oh, okay, you know, the sun went under clouds for a while and everything was fine. We did. But the, then the pandemic raised its head again. They're kind of making mountains out of molehills. <clears throat> I sent you and her an email. Yeah, I saw it. Oh, all right. He, I don't know what okay. Going on. I, he just brought it up. Thank you, Chris. I'll talk to you later. Glad he did. I don't follow it. No, no, I don't either. So. Okay. All right. Listen, before, give me two minutes, before we go into the golf thing, I guess Bob brought to our attention a survey that he did based on a request. So let's just give him, if I can, give Bob a couple minutes to talk about this. And this was a request uh, that was made by the, I'm not going to say it right, Al, Almeria Avenue people with a signed petition that they sent us. So he did a survey on it and your findings. Right. Um, like I said, I was asked, is this on? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Say your name. Bob Hiltz. <laughs> yeah, I was... Um, we got a letter that was forwarded to Chris, and Chris forwarded it, forwarded it to me to the letter of the concerns of the uh, speed of the travel on Elmeria. As you know, Barbarossa and Ken, 
Emporia both have speed bumps. So now the volume of traffic has picked up considerably on Elmeria. And as you can see during the thing, there's quite a few readings over the speed limit. And more than that, my concern is the rate of speed is pretty considerable. And we should probably consider, this is one that we probably should consider doing with the board approval as far as purchasing the speed bump and applying. On the other two streets, did we do one or two bumps? We did two bumps. We're required to do, the policy says you have to do two. Oh, it does? Yep, two, because if you put one, once they're over it, then they're done. And then the other one down there keeps their pace at a slower rate. So you are recommending that we do two bumps on Elmeria? Yes, sir. This is one that we probably should do. Any questions? Do we have it in the budget? No. We have open budget. It's not a line item that they aren't real expensive. It's about $3,000. $3,000? All said and done, yeah. All said, I mean, all said and done there. And also, they did have adequate signatures on their petition. We require them to get a petition from the members on the, or the residents on that, on that street. And they did have adequate amount of signatures. Yeah, we usually see these before it gets done. So that's the only thing I would question is that, I'm glad you did it, but I think the board should, when that letter comes in, we should be notified that we're going to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think you sent it to the right, you got to send this to us. And then to Bob. And then to Bob. In the future, if the one comes in. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Going forward. I mean, that's why I brought this to your attention right now. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, no, no, you did the right thing. You did good. It's just that, so I guess. The board, that's all. David's not here. Do we have to? Well, let's just do it. It's just a line item. Let's just do it. Well, he's, yeah, it's under. He's got it. So you got it. Yeah. Anybody disagree with doing this? Yep. You're good. Good job. Thank you. Can I ask, make a request too, when we're locating those, um, either include Drew or Joey, because a couple of those speed bumps, they're put right adjacent to the manhole, so the people are coming up and stopping with their front left wheel on the manhole, and on the other, or if it's on the other side, when they accelerate coming off, and they're pushing those manholes right into the you know, I don't road. think we've ever considered manholes, but we can do, well, we always, like, when uh, our former bosses, we would always go out and mark where we're going to put them, and we'll consider that. Yeah, yeah. Let's give it a little thought. We were worried about driveways. Uh, Um, so I mean that's how we, um, I don't have okay you're good to go thank you sir okay golf budget huh one second here <clears throat> I know there were pages that Mike added on at the end. He gave us copies of today. Why don't we save those for after we go through the actual budget? Just as a Brian Rhodes term, just as a general thing, this was a very quick turnaround. We did a very straight line, top line budget for this. Procedure. Very confident we can get to the bottom numbers that the board wanted for each what the uh, golf facility may have to be. However, there's some things on there that need to change on the on the copy that was given to you to begin with. So there's going to be some massaging of numbers. I mean, just on notes, uh, there's a mistake on the pro shop cost of goods. It's running at 55 percent in the this budget we've been running at 65 percent that equates to about forty thousand dollars 
the golf ops expenses did not have a budgeted increase over our current forecast. We are expecting some inflational increases, especially in range falls and things of that nature. So I'd like, you know, we'll continue to go on. We'll come back to you with the, the next line in the budget. We'll build it out. We're working towards a number that we'll get to. Uh, golf expense, G&A expenses, credit card fees were not percentage of revenues, so that's going to change that number, drive it a little bit harder. There's we got to get with Chris on what we expect for the insurance cost, if there's going to be an increase on that. You know, currently we'll, we'll budget a 10 to 15 percent increase, and utilities have been increasing roughly about 5 percent. So those are some of the things that are going to adjust the number up. We believe that we can drive the revenues up also. Uh, when we look at maintenance for Jimmy here, there's right now we have a 50% increase in, in fertilizer. We just um, you know, came to the board today because it was 89%. So we want to make some phone calls, make sure that we have the correct numbers on what we've been using, what we're anticipating before we give you the exact numbers. Uh, labor and maintenance, we have we took over mowing the Bahia grass. It was a deal with Dan. You know, we were getting forty thousand dollars. It was there. It was part of the thing that goes on there. Omar moved it, so we didn't show as a revenue. So we made, you know, we got to figure out how we're going to show that with a revenue and work with Chris on that. F and D uh, cost of goods is a little low. I expect the revenues will go higher because some of the prices increased just based off the cost and the inflation. I believe we can get another six to 10 points on, on just sales percentage there. So. Got any good numbers on this? Anything good that will stay or is it all going to change? It's all going to be massaged slightly. I mean, it's what, 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 why? It, 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 it was getting to us on Friday. I was out of town. He turned it in on Tuesday. It's a good thing we didn't know we were going to do budgets. <laughs> I, I Maybe I, I'm i going to take blame, I guess. I didn't explain myself correctly. The, when we set a goal for people, that's a goal. That doesn't mean you have to force feed the numbers to come out with that goal. That's what we think we'd like to see you end up with. What you're supposed to come to us with is what you got and what, you're going to, what you think is going to happen. And then say... Ray, the board wanted us to have a four hundred and eighty thousand dollar increase in golf. We only can give you four sixty. And here's why. But what you're giving us is four eighty and you're saying, well, look at it now, enjoy it, but it's not right. Is that correct? Is that a pretty good summation? That's a pretty good summation, right? We got so why are we, we why, go why would I even budget line than what we did? Why would I want to put these people through the aggravation of Critiquing something that we know is already wrong. I, I really think that all of us are aware that prices are going to go up. I mean, and so I think what Ray's trying to say, we need, don't, don't be afraid if you tell us the truth, whatever it is. I mean, no, that's, I'll tell you the truth. that's I mean, obviously what we went it through. is. Those are the notes I, I was in DC last week for meetings. I couldn't get away. I was, the notes I sent were basically the notes I sent Mike, right? So we need to go through with a fine tooth comb. It's always a longer process in a budget. You know, obviously, I think the work was done here to see can we get there, and I think we can. However, I want to make sure that expense numbers are correct to see where we have to go. Because, yes, I'm anticipating that golf is going to stay the same and not drop. So the current COVID market, which last year we kind of anticipated it would drop, and it really hasn't. So I'm, we're going to ride that bubble until it bursts. Yes, we're seeing double-digit inflation in cost, and it's really hitting our maintenance. And I don't have numbers. We do our pre-buys in October, so the companies won't give me exact numbers. We're going to lean on them from a – I have calls in from – our national agronomists leaning on the chemical and fur companies that we deal with to figure out what our costs will be. 
And then, yes, and then we'll come back in and say, you know what, we're going to end up doing an 8% increase on. So the bottom line is you guys, you guys aren't ready. We're not ready. Even though, I mean, this is, we are not doing anything different than we've done for the last, how many years? <laughs> well, it's, it, I don't think it's going to change either because. I mean, especially now with the changing of price and nobody knows anything. No, I understand that. But if, to give us a plan and go through all this time of spending, I mean, you guys spent a lot. Somebody spent a lot of time doing this and then tell me it's worthless. It's, yes, it's, I well, think what he said. Oh, excuse is, me. It's right. not. Excuse me. It's it's to to tell me it's not correct. Well, it's we we're shooting for 460. He's saying 480. So you're, you you have a difference of twenty thousand dollars. But the thing was, the, I, what we said was, give us what it is, and then tell us if you don't hit the number, why you can't hit that number. You're telling us, here's what you wanted, but we're not going to be able to hit it. But we'll get back to you when we figure out why. That's what you're telling us. That's not what we asked for. When we were. We on a Friday and we turn in the paperwork on a Tuesday. We can't turn a budget around. We've been doing April golf for as many years as I can remember. I, we, have no, I, we will work on the budget and get it there. I can get you a budget by next Friday. It'll be you know, pretty darn close. And then we'll talk about what we need if we can't get to the numbers, which we need. I want to know what's going to happen and tell me why you can't hit the 480. The 480, number one, on golf. It's not even the right number. It's going to be higher than that. Because I'm going to make it higher than that before we're all said and done because you're tracking higher than that. You're tracking higher than your own number. Every month you come out with a report, you're beating the hell out of it. And your number's going up and up and up. So what the, what the board wanted was for you to have a 5% increase in golf. That's what it came to. So whatever you number, when, as you go up higher, we're going to put 5% more on it. Well, April is a... Rough show right now, right? Uh, I've just based it on Mark. Based on what he sent out, I mean, obviously, we ran into some condition issues. We ran into the hailstorm. We ran into a bunch so we'll of see what it says. Issues. We'll see what it says. Now, we are working with Chris on some, uh, some insurance <laughs> issues that we may have in a business interruption insurance, which may bring some of that money back into the fold. I don't know the deductibles and what's going to happen. But yes. I don't have any numbers. If the numbers See, aren't good, what are, what is our options? In my in my mind, I have no <laughs> I have no figure of 480 or anything because I'm, I think I, I'm smart enough to know everything is going up, and I I am concerned. I, I will be I will want you guys to have enough money for the operational part of the golf course. And so the figures aren't going to scare me. Now that's just me, and I'm not going to say 520,000. I'm not going to say 530 or a five percent increase. But it's important that you operate. The figures are right with your operation. Now I got, I got issues with the other parts, but the operational part of the golf course is very important, so we don't short short ourselves. So. I'm speaking for myself. You give us a budget that you can work with, and I don't care what it is, but you guys know better than us. But we, and I hope that you you keep the cost down. But I have nothing in my head that you got to stick to a number because the operational part of the golf course is very very important. We will work to keep the cost down wherever we can, right? And the same goes with the budget. We're going to try to give you a budget that's very accurate in what we can do. No. Well, we know that we're set right now. The board has approved a five percent increase for next year's number. We're kind of working off that. You know, we don't want to come back and ask for eight. Don't. We're going to try to work with five. Otherwise, you know, we'll tell you if we can't. We got to be at five this week. You're going to try and work with five. You just talked about five for three straight years or four straight years. Yeah. So this is year two. Community. So you got five, not eight, five. Well, our costs are going up. I don't 14%, care. Right? I don't and care. And the membership pays 65% So. I'm tired of dealing with the excuses, Brian. It's not an excuse. It's just those are facts. Five five percent, if I remember correct, five, is, is about eleven thousand dollars a point. 
about eleven thousand dollars a point correct that's fifty five thousand dollars in additional income that we've told you you can have up front correct yes that's eleven thousand fifty five thousand dollars right I, last I heard, it was eleven thousand dollars a point. Every oh, time we right. went up a point in in membership fees, it was eleven thousand dollars of income. Yeah, that's so true. that will not cover probably our fertilizer. I'm sorry. They may not cover our fertilizer. It's you know, then you got to figure out a way to cut. Uh, you know, we're running a business here. I understand. And we, I want you to remember that. Right now, now <laughs> you know. Yes, the leases and everything. Even in wise, we're hot. We're, Come we're, back to us with what you got. We'll do. And we'll take a look at it. But if it's ridiculous. I mean, I, I I have to be responsible. Well, the board has to be responsible for the golf course's performance. And you guys are going to have to make work. I will not accept losing a dollar from this year's performance. I won't. I mean, I these guys may. The rest of these guys may say it's okay. I don't. I would have a very difficult time saying it's okay. I didn't say we're going back. That's certainly when we walk into this door, we're going to report, right? That's what we said. Work out with the numbers and come back to us, steps. which right. is what should have happened today. Do you want to let? Do you want to mention then the membership rates? I mean, you already we already kind of covered it. It's a five percent increase. Is everybody okay with that? That's what we had kind of discussed last year. We had year. discussed yes. that yes. before everything went screwed. Before everything went screwed. Yeah. Cool. So I, we think 5% is enough. That's what I'm asking. Do you guys want to comment on the 5% five, five is enough? I think so. I think it is. Well, yeah. I, I, I've had enough members come up to me asking for discounts. Well, yeah. No. But, you know, on the total picture, I think if we... If we're talking 5% here, we're talking 5% on assessments, we're talking more on utilities, I think 5% is a reasonable request of our members, especially when we're spending $2 million on redoing the course. And I know prices have gone up, but we've also had a significant increase in play also. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at your estimated rounds, public rounds, you're estimating we're going to pick up 2,600 rounds this year. That's phenomenal. And I know the average price has gone up, even though it's still below where I would like to see it at, but you've made great strides in, in the average price per round going up. I think that if we present a better product, which I think we can, I think we can even get more per round. Yeah. The one fertilizer application. And so in the past, we would do three wall-to-wall -wall fertilizer applications. So right now, we're only doing one a year. So we look at our refs and look at all of our stuff and go, you know, why is that like that? But one granular feed a year is really not enough. But I can't go We just make year. that plan. Excuse me? We didn't make that plan. But, but if I put $210,000 in fertilizer, you'd freak out. Why don't you put it? Why don't you put together the plan that you need and let us freak out instead of this that other? Would be, that would be awesome. Stuff that you're doing. I mean, so you want us to go? You want us to say, okay, you're, we're going to want you to cut, 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 so we got the same damn conditions out there that we've got today? No, that's what I didn't create said. the conditions. Pardon? I did not create those conditions. Your company. Come on, it's, we're not Don't. pointing fingers at who did what, who did what. That's not what we're here for. We're here to discuss the budget. Um, I, I would like to see a good budget, okay? I want a budget that you're going to give to this board and say, this is what we think we can do. And we're mighty proud of it. And then let us rip it apart if you want. I'm, when we're talking about raising uh, revenues across the board um, for 5%, our outside play, can we raise that? The outside play is entirely up to what they charge. Raise that up. That's what I would. And that's not what we get to. And the driving range also. They they really don't have 
Well, there's a couple of things. They don't have to raise their rates. I mean, they're doing it, but their hotel rates and all that stuff. Yes. They just got to collect more on what they play in their rooms. I mean, there's plenty of, we're not close to what, what they're quoting. That's okay. the high end of the rates. Right. I mean, I was trying to say high and low. I want to see low, the low move more than down Okay. I mean, just, if you look, if just you look, so y'all y'all know, I will never approve a budget that's only got one fertilizer application. I can't hear. And you, that's Beth. just speaking for me. I Mike, can't hear you. I know Beth. too much. I know too much about the business. Bev, I can't. I can't hear you, Bev. I said I will not approve a budget that only has one application of fertilizer. I know too much about no, this. No, let them let work. them bring. So you no, to let me. them bring that to us. <laughs> let them bring that to us. Yeah, go ahead and bring it to because we'll find somebody else to do this. Wow. I, I have a just a quick question on some of these um, memberships and that you've went down on them. Is that because we were too high last year? Like uh, the again. full family one. Say that again. Uh, the memberships, your forecast. Uh, you went down on some of them. Is just because we were too high last year or? You're just expecting some to go down. So when you're looking at that, that last sheet, year, like full family was 119. You're you're that forecasting was, 114 this no, year. No, you gotta look at the current. Right. Time. So that yeah. Not, so you gotta no, also no. remember that. Some oh, of okay. Those, gotcha. But you're right. It's going down in the yeah. uh, full single. It is going down. Okay. Very good. That's all right. But you also have to understand that there's some folks that that go into different categories. So as the age as the age goes up, so we take our membership roster. It has everybody's age on it, and we go through and we vet all 500 of them, or all 330 memberships. And what category are they going to rejoin? Are they going to go from this category? Are they going to go to that quarter category? So so these numbers are literally based one by one by one through the list of what we are forecasting, what we're guessing these folks are going to do. Are they going to rejoin? Are they going to be a five month this year? Or do they become a full single, you know, we're okay. giving it our best guess, literally individually, member by member. Thank you. That explained it. Okay, I, so for the time, but, oh, go ahead. But we're, your current, you're saying we're going to lose two memberships from next year. Yes. After all the, with the, all the growth that we've had, we're going to lose membership next year. In total, that every year there's there's definitely some attrition. We've we've lost how many members have we lost this year that 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 have already passed away from this year going to next year? I mean, there's been I mean, I get the emails monthly. Well, but you're not getting any new members. This this basically has it lying very flat okay. right. as far as new members joining from last year to this year, as opposed to. We don't have the 50% are off member program anymore. My forecast is suggesting that we're going to be very flat as far as growth versus attrition. There's a few members that don't indicate that they're going to join. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
does not end till the end of June. Listen, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what Craig's saying. I have to go with Craig on this one. If this, if we're not increasing our membership, we got a problem. Yep, right. Big problem. We certainly do. Because we're growing, our community is growing. Yeah, I mean, what about all the homes? We can't something. sell memberships, then we're obviously doing something wrong. I would think you have to look at that closely. As, I think it has to be an increase. In my projection. Based on what's right. going on so in my projection as of this year, with with what I've told you, with a 50% off membership program, which got a, which kind of overinflated us slightly, plus everything else, this current year is going to be flat. That doesn't mean that it's going to be flat going into next year. I mean, that's just my prediction is this year because of that program and those, we literally vented through our whole membership program. This is my best guess as to where our membership is going to land. I'd like for you to revisit it. If you could revisit it, that would be great. Next page is the uh, club rates. Anybody want to comment on those? They're basically, if I'm hearing it, reading it correctly, they're taking it up one or two dollars per listing. Is that about correct? I'm sorry. Say that again. I was pulling on the the rates, the hotel rates, the off street rates, the resident rates. You're taking them up about one or two dollars per listing. Yes, that is correct. Which really means absolutely nothing until you start charging that amount. Right, because that these are these are maximums. They're the maximum. Amount. So right. we so, don't know what they're charging. So the off rate and, and they fluctuate. So obviously, the busier it is, the higher the rate's going to be. I the hotel have, rates stay pretty solid, uh, and the resident rates. One issue on this okay. Page. I don't think it's fair to take the driving range memberships up again. That's just my opinion. We're taking it up to 275 now for a family membership and 225 for a single membership. They were 200 and 250 responsibly, but we're raising them 5% in their rates anyway. Do we really want to take them up on that one as well? Anybody? I, no, I think you have to take them up. The driving, the, the balls? Absolutely. If you're going to have an increase, is an increase. I mean, I just I think you have to take them up. it's def yeah, it's definitely going to cost more to maintain the range. Plus, the range balls themselves have increased steadily. You have to. I mean, that would be my recommendation to do so. It's not a significant number. Anybody else? Just me. Okay. I, I would like to, uh, can we talk about this chart that you did, the organizational chart, just for a moment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're done with the budget conversation, right? Okay. I mean, yep. as yep. far as what yep. we can yep. do with it today. I think the organizational chart that you did is a good beginning. However, I am, I am concerned over coverage in the restaurant specifically. I know you hired Sandra, and that's mm -hmm. a good start, and that's wonderful. But I, I don't see here what I would consider to be enough supporting management running that restaurant. I think we already had this conversation before. If the restaurant's open 80 hours a week, there should be 80, 80 hours of management coverage. Absolutely. I'm sorry? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there should be 80 hours of management coverage. And maybe there is, but when I look at your organizational chart, I can't see it. So I need you to read to to break it down a little bit more so I can see who do you assist, how many assistant managers you have and be and have the board feel comfortable that mm -hmm. we will have 80 hours or whatever the number of hours is coverage from a management standpoint. And that means, in my opinion, the manager doesn't do bar service. The manager is not a, a table server. The manager is a manager. And has the people who are doing everything else reporting to them and directing them, et cetera, et cetera, reading the customers, going over to the tables, is everything wonderful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I need you to break it down further so we can see that and assure us that you're going to have that kind of coverage. The other thing I'm concerned about is, and I probably shouldn't know this, but somebody told me this, is that I understand we have a Somebody in charge of getting, of doing the servicing or going out and finding banquets. I don't know what you call it. And then somebody in charge of executing those banquets. That is correct. Why? I mean, I just would say to you, why do I need somebody who goes out and finds them and then somebody else who serves them? 
this, this can't be a, a full-time job for the banquet person to solicit business based on your dollars it certainly is so I'm, I'm do we have a sale do we have a sales director that's full-time i'm sorry you don't think we should have a full-time sales director not based on your dollars Unless you can increase your dollars, it justifies. I mean, I've held that position. It's it's a full time job. I, I did it for four years. Um, and you definitely got to have somebody uh, as far as a banquet know. captain. I just I think I don't understand why we'd have to. We do. So I need you to break it down a little bit further. Sure. I mean, I'll. I mean, we do well over 200 banquets a year. I mean, it's it's definitely a full time deal. Well, based on your volume, that means you're doing less than a thousand dollars a banquet. Well, there's some larger ones and there's some smaller ones. There's weddings for ten thousand dollars and there's small being, ones. Do you consider bank? Let me ask you this: Do you consider banquets being uh, when we have uh, luncheons for golf? We MGA. Absolutely, we consider everything That's over twenty-five. We consider everything over twenty-five people a banquet. Or it doesn't necessarily have to be a banquet, but it it it, it requires uh, special needs to. It requires somebody to service it. No question about it. But. Who is soliciting it also them? requires somebody to organize business. it too, yeah. Yep, the women are doing events and having lunches and dinners or whatever. We're and doing we, the same thing. It. You're not soliciting that business. That's being given yeah. to you. But somebody still has to organize it. Somebody has to take care of, you know, somebody has to make sure we have the layouts. we got to have the food choices. we got to have all that stuff. The best you can. Uh, no, I, I totally understand. Right. Just break it down a little bit more and show us so we can understand and agree. Uh, I have two other issues that I do want to bring up pertaining to golf. Let's talk. I really think that we have to give serious consideration to switching the nines on deer. I know we talked about this once before, and I know there was some people against it, but it won't cost anything. If we wait three or four months to change the nines, You'll have to order new cards anyway. There is no sense in, in, in saying that hole 18's got to be a signature hole and got to be the last hole makes very little sense to me. It doesn't matter what number your signature hole is as long as you have a signature hole. It could be nine. You go to, if you go to Pebble Beach, it's it's uh, seven. What's that, par three there? If, I mean, wherever course you look at, you, you go to where they played the uh, the players, it's number 17. I just think it makes more sense to switch the nine on deer because then you can utilize the shack. And I would only do it between the peak season, October through March. But if you make it work. What are you talking about? You mean people can't figure out where the money is? Uh, I don't think that's going to be part of my decision making process. I, we won't, that energy? the whole, the just grand. have to. So there is the bottom line. I look at it and it makes a good, for that matter, we kept the car off the bottom. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking, if we utilize that, that shop or if the, we, uh, the if shack. You, if you're utilizing the shack, I would agree right. with it. But you gotta open the shack. Right. If you're not gonna open the shack, then then you shouldn't. Then we're, then we're wasting our time. Right. I agree. I, and I, why, and I, why would we open the shack? How much money are you gonna hire another person to put over? No, you gonna serve hot dogs? No. And you, you don't yeah. run the cart. You don't run the beverage cart on deer. Right. You, you do away with that service. Why? Because you get it at the turn. You get it at the turn. <clears throat> That's what most places. Well, not most. A lot of places do. They have a place at the turn when you can get your beer, your hot dog, etc. They don't have the beverage cart running around on the out on the course. Now, I still have a beverage cart for turtle because there isn't any other service out there. Right. But I, I just I'd like the course the way it is. Why? I what? What? Why? Why? Because. I'll tell you why. Because I like to, when I make the turn, I like to go into the bathroom at the gun house and not have to go to the bathroom outside. Out there in those little shack things. That's right in there. That's why. And the expense that I don't want to have our granite signs with the car cut off the bottom. Well, but if we switch it, this will become number nine. You're going to go right past the 
you buy you buy the cart, you buy all the stuff. It's and I just I just if you want, wouldn't it be easier just to park the if you don't want to run the it's cart? It's an amenity. The I've been told for seven years. That's what Maggie Valley does. Amenities don't make profit. Do. I would like they to say they don't have any hot food on the cart. Well, if you I will add confusion to everything. I'll I'll take a recommendation from you guys what you want before I have an opinion. I think it's going to increase sales. Yeah, I I personally th would would like to move them, but I I don't want to make that right. Decision. I think it gives us the opportunity to sell other things a lot easier, such as hot dogs. It's 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 not always easy running hot dogs on the on the on the beverage cart because it's hard to keep them hot. You don't. I, the only time you do it on the beverage cart is when we go ask them. Right. And they go into it. They'll they they basically make special trips for that. So in that <laughs> instance, I definitely agree with that. Uh, to me. Half the time when we operate reverse shotguns on uh, deer anyway, we do tee times off on number 10. So ultimately, as far as operational goes, it, I do, it doesn't mean anything to me. I think number nine is a better finishing hole personally. I would say if, if we do want to make this happen, I would shoot for around first of the, the year, January 1, just because that's when that would give us time because we're going to need our scorecards by then. We're going to yeah, need I mean, some signage. Scorecards. I'm which, not trying to say to spend which, extra money on that this. Would be my, I'm just thinking it's so, the right thing to do, and for I, January, it's January. I, I definitely think there's definitely pros and cons to it, and ultimately I think it balances out to me. I think it used to be having, that way, right? Before I, it was before I got here, so yeah. it probably 10, well, well I was, I don't know new clubhouse then. It was probably 12, it's 12, 12 or 13 years ago. All right. So. And when I was a member, I started on, in summers, we started on 10 every every day. So, I mean, so it's not. A, it, <laughs> I mean, I don't see any difference. I, 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 well, I, I think at least through October, it's, it's a convenience for the it's, it's, it's a convenience for the I people playing on the golf course. Sell, if he kept it open, he didn't even have to keep it open necessarily. Maybe it's only from ten to two during summer. No, but I don't think you keep it open during the summer. I don't know. There, I don't think there's enough players in the summer. In the winter, when you have four hundred and fifty rounds. Right. That's when I think that's, you do it. I mean, that's, that's definitely what I would do in the summertime, typically, you know, depending on which course is open or if we have both open, we can run one Bev cart, cover two courses uh, just to be efficient. Yeah, for sure. If we were going to do it, it would be in season only. So can we have a consensus of whether we want to do this or not? I'm for it along with a caveat that Maybe we open again, up the snack shop. I'm, I'm still against it. I, I like think? it the way it is. I like I'm, it the way I'm for it with the caveat that it opens up the snack shack. Michael? I'm for it. Michael? Give it a shot. We're going to shoot. Let All us right. know when you think you can do it. Okay. My last thing to bring up. The practice area. That was going to be open June or July. I can't remember. June of last year. That practice area. That's still not open. Are we making a mistake by even opening that the way it is? Because I looked at it and I look at it and I look at it and it spells trouble. I mean, we're telling people they can go from both sides and hit the ball, but they got to hit their own ball and they got to get their own ball. And I'm thinking we're asking for something that we shouldn't be asking for. Can you talk into the mic, please? Thank you. I think it makes sense as a warm-up spot to utilize the bunker and utilize the one green on the closest to the pro shot. Just, just so that you can get warmed up over there and you don't have to go across the street. If somebody doesn't want to go hit balls and just wants to warm up, I think it makes more sense to utilize that area. All right, let me ask this then. If we take out, if we just have leave the bunker there, to make the bunker in that little green and practice sand trap to go up alongside our putting green and take the rest of it and just let it be or whatever. And don't close down the pitching area, the chipping area, and the sand trap that we have across the street. The, Say that again, I'm sorry. The existing 
practice area that we have across the street. The only reason we ever decided or was recommended to close it was because we were afraid somebody was going to get injured. Nobody has ever been injured over there. I don't know why we would close it. It's a, it's a decent facility that's being used. I, I would say perhaps we would shorten the area that you can pitch to the green on. That would make sense. But to, to close it down, I don't see what, what we accomplish. Is there I know we wasted 35000 on this, and that was pretty dumb on our parts. Is the, is the game plan still to add the back mat on the driving range as well? Yes. Okay. So I, I think at times when they're on that mat that maybe we need to think about maybe shutting it down at that time. Or we can review that. Right. Because I think I mean, the time... question comes: We really want to shut down that, that part of the golf course or that facility that's available. No. At one point, the board decided that was the right thing to do. That's why I'm, I'm bringing it up because we'd have to re change our de decision. Here. Which one are you talking about? The one. The one, the one by, by the driving range. Oh no. no. I don't like that. You don't like that one? I do. Oh, you do. The one by the driving range where there's a sand trap. Right. And uh, people use the. I don't know, further down, they, they use it for chipping, mm -hmm. chipping yes. onto the green. We decided that was not to be used after we built this one. So the question is, are we still, I would like to see that not, I would like to see that decision changed. And that's what I'm throwing out to you guys. If you like it the way, it, the, the plan the way it was, and we'll continue with it, that's fine. And we would split the new area and just make it as a warm up area with the putting green, a chipping area, and still utilize that bunker. Yeah. Yes. That would be my recommendation. Think Otherwise, I think we're going to have a bigger problem. Well, I, I, but I need, we got to make that decision. I've got no problem leaving the current one open. <laughs> I, I thought that, well, well it doesn't matter because it's. I mean, I guess it, it makes no difference. But the reason I voted to build the new one was that we were going to shut that down because of, I know, of I stuff. So right. here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> about liability. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm a no. I want that thing closed because that's why I voted for the new one. But it's only thirty five thousand dollars. What the hell? Well, you shouldn't have voted for it. Well, it, because they said they were going to close the other one. Well, that's the only reason I voted for the new one. Have we gone? I mean, the only reason that I'm bringing this up is because I went out and looked at the new one. I think we were misled, or I was misled. I thought it was going to be a diff lot bigger than it actually is. It's a pretty small part, real <coughs> piece of real estate. And I think that's even more dangerous than the one we got I now. It's a it's 120 yards is what it actually is from end to end. And I, I still think in the future, I mean, if we could put a net down there by even the old facility, I think it would eliminate, eliminate the opportunity. I'm not saying do it right now. I just think nets, maybe down the road. Nets look like yeah. crap in a matter of hours. I was yeah. talking about it. <laughs> Who's been hurt? Right, there was a guy that hit the side of the leg that was in the different range and he never ran. But people have to get the cars that they get. Okay? So, I mean, you say stuff, but the you know, have to back, back mm -hmm. it, right? The chipping area. I have never seen a report on that, have you? Well, yeah. yeah. yeah he, he would, but not us. Right. But <laughs> and, I mean, to me, I don't want to see a net go up. I don't want to see a net go up either. Okay, that's that, that's you know, we go back and forth with you. The reason why we put that, and Jimmy, you did a great job because that was one of your first jobs here, and you got thrown in the you know, get that done. Okay. But I think he got it. we have to think yeah, he got it. about the safety. And we were brought up to be the safety. So if someone Chris, if someone gets hit, and this is a part of this meeting, okay, are we liable? No. Wouldn't matter if it was brought up at the meeting or not. You're the property well, owner. You're liable. Thank you. And that, that's, that's whether you're on the golf course or not. Listen, yeah, we can do what we want, but I I will not vote for not closing it. 
but you know, and hell, a year from now we might have new supervisors, and we switch back again. So you know. <laughs> now listen, I am perfectly fine with leaving it the way it is. I'm just bringing it up. If you, I mean, for you guys to go in this major uproar is just not necessary. Fine, if if you want it, let's. If you so, why don't you say I don't want to change? That's one, Michael. I don't want to change. Beverly. I like it the way it is. I don't think I don't think the new one is going to satisfy the majority exactly. of the people that want to exactly. do that type of work. Unfortunately, I don't. I just don't think the design is. But I know why we I, we we said that we put that in so that we close the other. But I don't think people are going to be satisfied. I don't either. So and we're not I mean, he's talking about the golfers. Well, there, there is no place to check. All right. <laughs> yeah, but the whole thing is, is a lot of people were worried about that if somebody's at the other end and scalds a ball or whatever, right. or exactly. somebody's trying to hit the 40 yard wedge shot and they're hitting out of the bunker and scalds it, then what happens when that person gets it? Let's, Here, let's, let's do that. You have you also you, have you to shut, your ball. You shut that down over there. Just period. Shut it down. It's not to be used. Any I mean you can't go in and destroy it. No, no. I, mean, I don't want you to go in to destroy it. Oh, but you say there's, it down. there's no longer you can you can no longer use that area. And let's see what happens in the next six months. You talking okay. about the driving range one currently, the old one? Yeah, the, the old one. You shut it down. Just right. And say so you can't you can't play there anymore. That's where you're going to do it. And then get, see what happens. Get the feedback. Next six months. Yeah. Next six months isn't relative to Well, okay, make, make it nine months. So. <laughs> what, what I'm worried about, you got people coming this way, and people, they're both going this way, and then they got to go get their own balls. It's not, they're, playing, they're not playing with rain balls. They, put, they have to go get their own balls. Huh? Yeah. That's I not what they I don't think it's an issue. I, I think it's, no, I think the, the, the problem. The problem is if you put our balls out there, range balls, and somebody trips and falls on one, then you got another liability. You know, I would like you to bulldoze the new area. Yeah. That's, that's the way I feel about it. Bulldoze it, take it back out. I don't $35,000 down the drain is. Lord have mercy, you go, out, you go to the driving range to pitch and putt and work out your shanks, and if you shank your ball there, you could right. get somebody on the 18th green, for heaven's sakes. Come on, guys. I I like Craig. I'm going to, I'm going to, I think Craig's got a good one. Let's close Let's down the happens. one we got. June 1. Well, I don't know. When are you going to open up the one June, that we built? That, yeah, that's when we're going to open, June 1. Perfect. It's a year. When you close, when you open the new one, yeah. let's close down the old one, give it a few months to see what everybody's reaction is to it. And then we can, if we need oh, to make a change, goodness. make a change. Huh? <laughs> make it six months because then we get at least three months of uh, season. Okay. Back, yeah. We have nobody here. Oh, I mean, we'll give it six months, and when people come back from up north, if they're happy, fine. We'll leave, we'll close it down. So for good. We're going to pull the flags June one on the old one, and not allow anybody to utilize it anymore. That's right. Very good. The yep. whole, uh, the okay. Whole. Still maintain it. Though. Okay. We're just talking that that one air the bump, the whole driving one. No, 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 no. Just side the, of the right. Just, just the, the right. Side. Just on the Chipping right area. side. Chipping, Chipping and, and, and and the bunker, bunker area. area. That's all I had. Anybody have anything else? Meeting adjourned. At 1136. Yes. Good luck. Great. Good luck.